This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Trickell Professional Art Supplies. So go to uh, trickell.com and get 10% off of their brushes, panels, or floater frames if you use WTD10 at checkout. Hell yeah. What's your favorite brushes, Sergio? I personally enjoy the Spectrums, Josh. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, if you uh, use the code, it lets them know that you guys are listening and that you're supporting them and us what's by that, using that code. What's that code again? WTD10. Hell yeah. So use that and check out. Don't forget. Yeah. Uh, buying brushes helps us keep this thing going, helps us do cooler things in our future. So. Mm-hmm. Buy some brushes, and uh, you get a discount, and you support us. So, You obviously need new brushes anyway. Just look at them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't clean those fucking things. Mm-mm. Lazy fucks. <laughs> Lazy fucks. Probably, probably, probably should swear. <laughs> <laughs> I think of this podcast as the Beavis and Butthead of our podcast. <laughs> I, Hell yeah. That's a compliment, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. So which one are you? <laughs> no, it's well. I'm the laugher, so I'm obviously uh, Beavis. Uh, yeah. Cornholio. Or... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody, to. The number one NFL sports talk podcast. We're talking Patrick Mahomes today. No idea who that is. <laughs> that's no my. Idea. Sorry, guys. It's my other podcast. <laughs> this is Way in the Dry. Oh, that's I the guy, Sergio that's Lopez. Like, that's the Chiefs quarterback, right? <laughs> yeah. Are the Chiefs good or something? They're really good this year. Yeah. No idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> they're, you, they're, you a football watcher? No. Okay. Oh, so wait, did you introduce everyone? I am Sergio Lopez. I'm just lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> we have Nate Van Dyke and Paul Herman on the podcast today. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, bo- sorry. Do you watch football? Do either of you guys watch football? No, no I, sports. I, I'm, no I sports. watch sports <laughs> once every four years. I watch World Cup. Oh, okay, <laughs> I basically watch it like because it's. A moving picture at the bar. <laughs> right, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> That's pretty much how I watch it. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, I, I, I play a lot of sports when I was a kid, but, like, I, I, I think it's a – I think sports is, like, a male uh, sedative where it's just kind of like, let's just fucking – throw sports on and just let all the guys like turn into zombies it's weird yeah it's it's like cultish (laughs) i work at a job with a bunch of like nerdy people Mm -hmm. and all they do is talk sports and they like talk like they know what the fuck they're talking about and you're like yeah you you guys would get smashed by any of these people (laughs) right but somehow you think you should have an opinion oh it's the armchair quarterback (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah what are you talking about man (laughs) relax Sit over there and just be quiet. But I don't know. They love it. They love like the. Like do they have talk. their fantasy sports teams? Is that what they do? Uh, I'm sure. I don't know. I just overhear it when, like in the background. And I just put my headphones on and I crank it up louder. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Shut up, everyone. <laughs> well, it's it's like the basketball question. It's like you play basketball. It's like would I be sitting at this fucking bar if I played basketball? <laughs> you know. Anyway, we're not here for sports. We're here for Paul. Yeah. What's up, Paul? <laughs> so yeah, we met you today. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I'm on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your studio mates with Nate. Nate set it yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, bring you in. Mm-hmm. This is a storied studio, and I'm uh, happy to have Paul in here. We actually we met, God, like 18 years ago. We worked at a, a video game studio together. So oh, is that right? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Nice. I so, can say the name, but we worked at Chaba Games. How yeah. come okay. Is your mic picking up for oh. some reason? I'm- it's picking up. I guess I'm not talking loud enough. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe drink more. <laughs> <laughs> maybe turn it up a little. Yeah. I, I can't tell. It's does it sound low to me? Uh, yeah. yeah, sign language doesn't work well with podcasts. This is only our one millionth episode. <laughs> Still figuring shit out. <laughs> but yeah, we met uh, many years ago. He's uh, we worked at a Shaba video game studio originally in Sausalito, and then moved to San Francisco. Uh-huh. So I met him there, and he was actually. It was fucking hilarious because that's when I met Coro as well. Mm-hmm. So these guys, yeah, I was cubicle. We cu- cubicle buddies. Oh yeah, Coro. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So um, yeah, so this space, uh, you know, there's been some turnover in the studio, but uh, uh, Paul was looking for a space, and he was looking at some of these places. They're like, oh, here's a corner in the room, and uh, that'll be like eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So 
I was like, he's got a great spot, great light, and all For that. Sure. So it's it's fun to have him here. It's fun to be fun to be here. Fuck yeah! yeah. So, so how long did you do the like video game thing? Still doing the video game uh-huh. thing. Uh, Shaba, I just would like to say Shaba was an interesting place. Harkens back to the old days of video games, where just to relay a story, they had the fire the firemen come to do the inspection of the building, and they mm-hmm. were looking Koopa. at all. The, uh, they were looking at all the extinguisher boxes, and in one of the extinguisher boxes was a bong. <laughs> so that you, I fucking uh, Cora did that, didn't he? <laughs> that gives you that. And we had a basement, and there was a band room down there, and you could smoke hmm. cigarettes. What it was oh, really, really rock and roll, cool place. You know, what, awesome. you know what? You know what? Cora did once. He uh, he was moving out of his apartment, and uh, he Cora is a fucking fascinating character, but he ended up. He had a giant black dildo, mm-hmm. and he ended up putting it in the toilet tank. Uh-huh. So he's like, someday, at some point, someone is going to discover a giant black dildo <laughs> in the toilet tank. <laughs> but yeah. that was totally Coro doing the bong, I'm sure. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking hilarious. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I was, I'm an animator. Okay, the, yeah. Um, and Coro back in the day used to bring in his paintings, and that's oh, really? where I really got inspired. He would huh. just bring in these amazing pieces. So. Is that kind of what got you like into painting yeah. more? Yeah, yeah, that's totally. awesome. He would. Did you go to? Did you like learn painting in school or anything like that? No, I pretty much self-taught. I oh, went wow. to an old guy in the city, Bob Gerbrocht. Mm. He's actually the teacher for Randall Sexton. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, I know, I know, so. Randy. <laughs> But that was it. And then pretty much just doing a lot of internet. Mm-hmm. Hmm, um, for sure. Oh, back in the day, you could get the videos. I just <laughs> oh, like the DVDs and all that? Or just yeah, you could grab them. Back in the day, you could just Google oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Richard Schmidt videos, right. and they would just come up, and you could download them. Yeah. So I learned a lot that way. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. It seems Allegedly, like, I did. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a lot cheaper way to do it than art school. Yeah, I mean, at that point, too, like, I'm actually a classic, I, I'm an engineer, mechanical engineer. Uh-huh. That's what I went to school for. I just, oh, wow. I just don't want to go back wow. to the whole school thing again. Really? I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. Mm. Did you finish? Yeah, I finished. Wow. I, my grades got progressively worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got out, and it, it was tough to find engineering jobs. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And then, so then I started doing animation on the computer well i, th- I think i think the thing with like my dad was a civil engineer and i think the i think the thing with engineering is it's almost like a life job like there's no turnover on that you know it's like you got your job and you're gonna get your gold watch and all that stuff right you know it could be that it was the one or two jobs i got it's boring right the people <laughs> i don't know why it just sounds boring the word engineer just, I'm just like oh man that sounds like a sad life with a lot of schooling but I, I don't know what i was told recently was that engineers are kind of like their job is just to be able to solve whatever problem like pertains to like you know what i mean like like oh we you, if you're like a chemical engineer you have to solve that problem that appears and that's kind of their job in yeah. companies is the problem solver. and then when i heard you're that like, i was like you're that like a shit cool. fixer yeah you know but like on a high level or something like that on like a high technical level mm-hmm. and i was like oh that's kind of cool i never thought of it it always sounded like a really boring job i never understood what it meant and then i heard that i was like oh i'm kind of into that and you're like and it is a boring job <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm sure <laughs> well what's interesting is my my mom was a, uh, an artist and my dad a civil engineer so i actually see the combination of the two Mm -hmm. like like i i look at the infrastructure of like the golden gate bridge and i Mm -hmm. think it's sexy as fuck right Mm -hmm. like you're the guy uh, jacking it off oh like all those triangles i'm like oh (laughs) those those layer load bearing triangles yeah uh yeah but um what the fuck was I going to say? Uh, but but I was thinking that when I heard like that their job is to solve problems, I was like, oh, that kind of is the the like nerdy part in my art brain. That's like that's what I enjoy about art is like you you want to do something, you have to figure out how to do this, and a lot of times there's no fucking pathway 
to doing what you want to do because it's like an experiment a lot of times you're like i think i can do this by doing that but i have to figure this out the hard way and you do it i'm like oh i could see how engineering would be fun if if all it is is solving problems because to me that's fun that's probably what it is yeah i mean they just if you're good with math which Mm -hmm. i actually wasn't very good with math Mm. so yeah, isn't that but, a big part of the job? Yeah. <laughs> it's, so how, it's a long story. So, I was gonna take over my dad's business. I, I see. So, so how did you get? How did you get into uh, video games? So, I started on my own. I got Infinity and toyed around with it, and then I found out like the big Power Animator was the big thing, which turned into Maya. Oh, okay. And then I took one. I was doing reels. See, the thing about art that's awesome is you can just make a reel. You don't have to have, like, the school you went to. You can just say, look, I pro- I'm proving how awesome I am. So that's, right. like, your portfolio. Yeah, it's yeah. your portfolio. That's kind of the way you don't need – that's why we don't really need the schools. Is right. We can just prove without that we, are, we know what we're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. So then I just went up to Canada and learned Power Animator. Came back, still didn't get a job. And I think it was, like, my sixth reel – I finally landed a job mm. in Santa Cruz. That was really short. A lot of video game companies, they don't last long. That was like mm-hmm. six months. And then I started at Chaba Games. Oh, so what What was the uh, company I, in Santa Cruz? Osiris Studios. Mm. They're, they're gone. Uh, like, yeah. But anyway. Um, and then that's where I met Nate Bennett. Mm-hmm. Shop games. Are you doing like concept art? Is that your job? No, anim- character animator. Mm. I, I was doing concept art and stuff like that. They tried to get me into like modeling, and I clearly fucking sucked at it. <laughs> so I, I squeezed that one. It lasted 22 months. I've never made it two years at a company anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was doing concept art alongside with Koro, but Koro is like a mad genius and he could do mm-hmm. all kinds of shit. But mm-hmm. like, but like Paul and I actually started kind of uh, bonding over music because we also we we like a lot of the same types of music, metal, like mm-hmm. the really hard, metal. Ooh, that kind of shit, <laughs> the Cookie Monster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you even try to make that sound, or it's just natural. <laughs> <laughs> Did you clean your throat in the morning. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. I know nothing about metal. It's like a, one of the music genres that I just... You're more of a country guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I grew up in like hoods, so like metal was never... Like there was always like... The older I got, there was like little pockets of like Latin kids that listen to metal. Mm-hmm. And like... But I for some reason, it just always missed me. It was like the cool thing was rap and... And that's what we listened the, to. The, the thing with metal shows, because we've gone to a bunch of metal shows, and it's... The thing about metal shows is, like, they're pretty small venues, and like, mm-hmm. usually you can get like right up close, stage dive. I've crowd surfed this guy for the first time. He he and crowd st- surfed me. Age, I was age forty. That was the first time I crowd <laughs> surfed. I'm like, you're getting up. He's like, nice. here you're getting up. And I'm, meanwhile, I'm having like a hernia doing it, like, <laughs> getting him up. But like, the thing with metal shows is like, it's it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. To find someone that likes the same music, because right. it's, it's a very small genre of people that listen to that, more so than like, you know, U2 or whatever. But um, it's, it's when you, it, it's kind of like playing, it's like being best friends with the kid that lives up the street because right. he's up the fucking street, you know? Yeah, there's that weird, like, you're into my music is one of those like oh you know this i know this yeah we're, yeah, we're, no. yeah we're turning each other on to bands like he's like oh check this out yeah and then and then the next thing he's doing is like hey, sending me a link about like where do all the bob ross paintings go <laughs> you know <laughs> what do you mean did you guys see that video uh-huh. yeah, like, yeah oh yeah i know which one you're talking yeah. about yeah it really... was a little like mini documentary yeah. on like what happened to all they, of bob ross's they, paintings because he, he never sold them he so. never sold a single painting what <laughs> isn't that weird He's like the modern day Van Gogh. <laughs> it's like in a weird what? like strip. It's like in a strip mall, like it's in this yeah, weird office. Like, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. They don't know where any of them are? No, they, no, they know exactly where they are. <laughs> they, oh, they're actually never... in a strip mall? I thought that was a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're in like this weird little like in the back of office. office. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, in boxes. It's How not they... even a temperature controlled room. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And the other thing I didn't know is he did like the same painting three times, right? Oh, he oh, yeah, he repeated show, a lot right. of his yeah. paintings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like you'd have to paint them because of the angles. Well, he, it, it, it's it's you, 
you know when you see like those cooking shows and they're like, oh, it's ready to go in the oven, and then they right. bring out the turkey. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Kind of like, oh, like the turkey's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? the magic of it's TV. Like that kind of shit. Yeah, I see. So he probably did like a more refined one right, for like the exactly, final one. Yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> That's fucking interesting. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Goddamn, why aren't they capitalizing on the hype of Bob Ross right now? He's kind of like a big thing. I feel like it's like a weird, like new love for him has happened recently. They should I be agree. slinging those things. They should just do things. a museum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, make it Afro-shaped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking... <laughs> How have they not done this? I mean, we can... We can do like a nine. We can do like a Ocean's Eleven thing where we all <laughs> plot to steal the Bob Ross. That's what I thought. Can I be I the little like, Asian guy that like somersaults <laughs> yeah. and shit? You absolutely cannot be that. That's like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I got dibs on that dude. <laughs> I identify as a small Asian dude. <laughs> I don't know about small. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. You got. We got to figure out some like Andre the Giant thing where you like have to like. Th- Pull, you gotta like crowd surf him over something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. So, so Coral kind of got you into like you could say that, yeah. Getting into definitely got inspired. That's cool. And he then brought, he brought a lot of energy and a lot of like you just wanted to draw mm-hmm. you around him. He's he's a great friend, a great guy, and he just kind of inspired that. And I think everyone. Uh, when Paul and I met and we were, you know, they were working side by side. It just, everyone was like, just going bonkers. Damn. We just want to draw. We just want to paint. We just want to like, you know, cause you're around it. It's like being in a studio right. and you've got other people like, oh shit, look what that guy's working on. You right. Know? That's cool. I know. I had this conversation with someone recently on Instagram where they were, they told, they, they were in my DMs and they were said something about like, oh, you're. You're too good. It makes me not want to paint. I'm like, I don't understand that at all. You should like, if you see some shit that's awesome, that should like make you want to fucking do it more. Like right. that's how I feel. Is like, that's how, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, pushes me harder. Pushes mm-hmm. m- yeah. makes me want to like get better. And I was like, well, you- it's, it's kind of like if you uh, if you play someone that's really good at pool. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden you're making better shots. Right. If you play mm-hmm. someone that sucks and hits five banks and gets excited when it goes in a pocket, they're mm-hmm. like, oh yeah. You're like, oh, this game sucks. Right. <laughs> so it's like, I think a lot of us, the San Francisco is not the way it really used to be. Like when we were talking some years back, right. mm-hmm. a lot of the art, you know, is getting pushed out and stuff. But uh, it's just even having like Paul here in the studio, it's, it's like a, you know, we'll, we'll hang out, shoot the shit, and then it's like, all right, go do you, and I'll do me. You right. Know? Like, kind of, uh, you, you you bounce off of what other people are doing. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, we were saying, like, back in the day, shooting gallery and white walls, when they had their openings, it was a party. It oh, was, it, was, yeah. it was. You saw everybody there. Right. It was mm-hmm. a band like red dots. I right. remember, <laughs> I'm a fan of Kim Kogan's, and he mm-hmm. would, it was 100% red right. dots. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It is fucking a desert land right now. You guys know what the story with the oh, that, guy that runs the White Walls, what happened? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah for the most he, part. He, but. he essentially went on the lamb, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he paid every artist what they were owed and then he like gave my fives and good yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the story. Yeah. <laughs> well, didn't, like someone, someone had to go to court to get uh, their money. It was something like, yeah. I, I forget who I it think was. there's like one of those, what was it? What are they called? Class action lawsuits or some shit like that when it's like a group of people oh, all yeah. suing mm-hmm. them at once? I think that's happening still mm-hmm. right so now. I think it's still in like the process. Like, some like Weinstein shit. I mean, it's yeah. interesting in the context <laughs> of that, stu- that that place was doing so well. They were right. selling so many paintings <laughs> and yet. Yeah, uh, it's a know. fucking, I don't know. That's one of those infuriating things where uh, when people, it's like the artist already gets kind of screwed. Well, maybe not screwed. I don't know. We, the partnership between a gallery and the artists, artists have complained about forever because of the 50, 50 cut. So then when you, when you, um, and if you're lucky fuck, enough to sell it, yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. And then you get fucked anyways. You're like, that's so infuriating that you fucking took a hundred percent of the shit and you did nothing. What the yeah. fuck is your problem? Well, I think back in the day galleries had their place right I, I mean they still can but i mean we're we're doing a lot of self-promotion ourselves these days yeah well so. we can do actually all the work like all i mean we're work. all artists right here mm-hmm. we're like we're the ones who 
hey, look, I drew something, I painted something, right. whatever, you know, like, you know, podcast, this, that, the other thing. It's like, and then they're like, hey, yeah, just uh, hang that, hang that painting above the t-shirts. That's cool. You know? So, yeah, I have a question with, regarding this. Where do you guys see five, ten years from now how artists are going to sell art? Do you foresee, because I have my ideas, how do you, galleries are going to go away or they'll become something different? Uh, I think, I think, I think they have to, I think the relationship has to be like reevaluated mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it is that like we're all marketing our own shit. So the only thing you supply now, because you're not doing the marketing, if you look at like most galleries, it's like on your social media, you have what a thousand, 2000 followers. You have magazine. You, you're not going to put any ads in magazines. You're not going to do shit. You're just relying on the artists and, and if they have their group of buyers and their group of followers. So it's like, that has to be reevaluated in my opinion. And then, if not, I think it'll just a lot of galleries are going to die and there's going to be a small number of them. Kind of like how movies, it's like you either have a box office hit or nothing at all. It's like, it's that whole, I, I think in general right now, most art is being created on a hits basis on like, you have to make hits. You don't, we don't give a fuck about a record. We only care about a hit. And I think mm -hmm. um, most things, you know, the fucking everything's a superhero movie now because they know it'll, it'll, it'll make money. Everything's a radio play. And I think art will, art's kind of being forced into that. Who's making hits. I don't know. In a weird way, it's like, if I was an artist, if I was like an up and coming artist, I wouldn't pay attention to making like 30 paintings. I would pay more attention to making like real good hits in a weird way. I don't know what singles. that fucking means. Yeah. Singles <laughs> pay attention to making singles because mm. that shit in social media will blow up. That's like your radio play nowadays. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and you can always do singles, I guess in a group show. Yeah, exactly. What? Then you slang them on the, you slang your uh, other shit to private collectors through commission as your money maker while you're making hits. Well, well you know, what so, sucks is when you have like a, you have a, a gallery show and you're working on the pieces and, and someone, you know, one of your friends or a collector or somebody sees it and they're like, oh, I want that piece. And you're mm -hmm. like, and there's this like soul crushing thing in you like where you're like, uh, I need to take up wall space. Right. So you're going to go there and I'm going to get half of this, what it's worth. Right. And like an uh, artist, like for a lot of times you're bringing the buyers, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you're yeah. bringing them. At least a chunk of them. Maybe you might get like one where you or one or two where you're uh, like, a random here and yeah. there, you know. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you're like, uh, you're bringing the collectors, and, sure. it's, and you're just kind of like it's, it's a kind of a kick in the dick feeling when you're just like, uh, yeah, you know, for sure, it's the fucking worst. I just had a show not that long ago with the gallery, and I mean, I already talked a bunch of shit, so I don't give a fuck about this gallery, but, but um. <laughs> But yeah, they, they, every, literally everything that sold that night, including art that wasn't mine, was from people I invited. Exactly. And you're like, you made no money for me today. So why the fuck are you okay with taking half? Well, you know, the uh, a thing is I want to bring up is uh, uh, Paul had a show at Madrone Bar on Divisadero in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And they took what, 20%? Nothing. I have nothing but good things to say about Madrona Art Bar. For sure. <laughs> I don't know if I should say what the... It's Spike who runs Madrona Art Bar. Mm -hmm. is a class act when it comes to artists. That's awesome. I, they, he doesn't take any cut. That's awesome. Oh, really? cut. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you were selling, you were, fact, he, you were selling he, prints he, and stuff, too. Like prints and Yeah, paints. he let me sell prints. Mm. Like, But you only get one. You know, it's for break... You know, for, breaking in it's not like i'll right. be able to go there anymore kind of thing mm -hmm. but yeah mm -hmm. really nice nice like he has a deep respect well he's an artist himself so mm -hmm. he understands but so mm -hmm. I, I was curious how like i i remember going to that uh that opening i was curious how you got because he he'll paul will walk around and, like take photos like he this guy's got a camera around mm -hmm. and that kind of thing and he got really into um he got really into like neon lights and stuff okay. you know Right. I still owe him a trade for a piece. Mm -hmm. We'll get on that. But uh, <laughs> but he was doing these. That's like, official. Yeah, it is official. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's in the books. But he was doing yeah. this. What's interesting is he was, Paul was doing, and I want Paul to elaborate on this, but Paul was 
you know how artists go through like their periods, right? Not that sure. bloody kind, but like the the blue period or whatever, <laughs> yeah, or series or some shit. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So he was doing a bunch of neon lights and stuff, and now he's doing a lot of figurative work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, I don't want to get stuck. Right. Is that built? Is that when you transition like that? Is that from stagnation or some shit? You're like a kind of. It's easy now. I'm free. I'm really. I'm not established. So mm-hmm. there's a freedom. I make my money from something else. Right. I can mm-hmm. have my art be a hundred percent what I'm into. Mm-hmm. No one, you know what I mean? So right, for sure. So he will actually. So. Uh, he'll have models come. Uh, models come to the studio, photograph mm-hmm. them, and then like work off of those photos. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Back in this space. Yeah, that's what's up. So like, it's it's cool to see shit like that happening in here. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way to go. You you don't work off a model, right? Uh, I mean, I look in the mirror a lot, but like, that's about <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, I just, a lot of time. I mean, I work on the, the problem is with like the internet is like, you can just, right. Everything's there and you, but you don't want to get busted for be like, oh yeah, you fucking totally stole that photo. Mm-hmm. So like Paul was talking about like it being a unique photo. It's not something right. you just Googled like naked female back yeah. pose. Well, Sergio, right. you know that too, right? There's yeah. No yeah, way shoot you want all to my, use anybody yeah. else's material yeah. yeah i pretty much shoot all my own reference yeah yeah oh you, I, I didn't know that you shoot your reference mm-hmm. so do i so where do you get your models <laughs> um you shoot your reference. a lot of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh i mostly get them these days from uh uh models i find on instagram or they find me on there so yeah uh, okay. it's been a good networking tool for uh, that yeah yeah the only time i don't is when i'm drawing at work I'll just like look up well, a, reference. a lot of those videos and stuff. Yeah. That's the only time I just find something online. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to waste my reference on some shit. I'm just like doing for fun. Yeah. Cause, um, because I, it's like a limit of, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you, it's like, I have a limit of photographs and then I just use it for my sketchbook. And then I'd, oh, it's like, I, well, you know, when you feel like you wasted a good photo, you're like, fuck, that was like a shitty piece on that great photo or something yeah, like that. You know, I hate that. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. the worst. <laughs> or yeah. Or you have a photo and you have a deadline for a show and you're like, I can use that photo, but I wanted to do it for something like that. But I don't know. I'm strained on time. I don't fucking want to figure out what model to use this for this fucking group show or some shit so you end up doing like one piece where you're working on a picture series for a painting series you know and you're like fuck well that one's gone mm-hmm. uh i do that a lot mm-hmm. i don't know i'm waiting for you guys to be like yep <laughs> yes don't, that's only me don't you, get, <laughs> don't you get a lot of reference like i have i i have so many poses to pick yeah <laughs> yeah oh i have way more than i'll ever use yeah. yeah yeah i mean but like for me there's like for like every like thousand piece there, or p- pictures there's like three pictures that i actually want to paint mm-hmm. you know and i'm like well there's the three out of like the fucking a hundred or whatever i'm like all right well those are garbage i should just sort and get rid of them but mm. i don't know that's how i feel you gotta take no, better you, pictures <laughs> They're, they're fine it's just like all these like it's open, like open your eyes when you take them <laughs> it's the pictures aren't bad it's just like it's just like there's like a slight positioning of a hand you know where you're like that hand i don't want to draw that hand i want to draw so you like whittle through and you're like mm-hmm. that the posture like the pose of her face i like there rather than there so I, why would i paint that when i like that one better everything's like slightly different and then ends up being like 20 pictures that are pretty close to each other but only one's worth like one's like the spot on image and yeah. the others are just throwaways or well, like, like it, it's interesting how you uh as an artist you edit things right you know there's things where you're like okay i i know that's what i'm looking at mm-hmm. but you have to edit things there was uh i i remember doing life drawing god like you know 18 years ago and i was at this one class and you were three <laughs> fuck <laughs> three three feet tall so, um <laughs> But there was this, there was this girl, I re- still remember her name. Her, her name was uh, April and uh, beautiful young girl, whatever. And great poses and everything, mm-hmm. but uh, her nipples were like thumbs, like they were huge. So it was like, I looked like I had a, like a weird nipple fetish. I actually <laughs> drew them the way that they were. So yeah, I was like, yeah. I had to like, I had to surgically like draw her nipples smaller right, so it didn't sure, look like yeah, i yeah. had some weird fetish <laughs> you know that is 
Yeah, that's pretty true. There you go. That's, I don't, that's I don't. an easy edit, though. Come on. <laughs> She she won't she won't I don't think she's gonna listen to this. <laughs> no. Wait, I have a question along this line, Sergio. Mm-hmm. When you do your model shoots, do you have the model? Because you do drawing sessions as well. Do mm-hmm. you say, okay, hold that pose, and then when they've held it, they hold it really long, and you move the light and try all different spots, or do you just you, they just go and you're just snapping away? Uh, more so the the. The latter, okay. where yeah, uh, yeah, because I I've learned that I'm not good at directing models. Like every time I try to tell them what to do, it comes out worse. So uh, yeah. I just I just try to hire a model that's really good at doing yeah. what they do. And yeah. like every now and again, I'll tell them like, oh, can you do that pose again or or change a hand position that same pose? But I usually just respond to whatever they're doing. And if I need to to um, give them a little bit more direction, it's it's pretty minimal. I try to stay out of it as best as i can but uh That's yeah awesome. um how, how do you how do you interact with them well i've only done the one that was my my first time. oh for sure <laughs> <laughs> so oh, okay. i was just lucky i had a really good model so <clears throat> yeah they, they if they're good they they know what like mm-hmm. how to hold their hands yeah. in interesting positions they seem to yeah you don't like you said you yeah. don't need to direct them that much yeah definitely like do you do you uh paul do you like do you have poses and like ideas when they show up or you just kind of let them do them? Yeah. What did I, I had, Oh, the, I, I listed some things out for, I said, I didn't want you to smile. <laughs> it's like a passport photo. Or like, look at the photo. Fo- I, I don't like <laughs> when they look at the camera as well. A lot of times mm-hmm. oh, maybe, it's yeah. creepy. It's like, you feel yeah. like you're being violated when they look at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also don't enjoy painting. Like, when they like are just like looking like when you're painting eyeballs and they're just looking at you oh, like, yeah it's kind of boring like mm. and it's kind of weird i don't know i always yeah. i always panic when i paint eyes like face for i was like please don't make them cross-eyed please don't make them cross-eyed <laughs> <laughs> but no he's he's got some uh he's he's got some great photos from yeah. uh, the models that he's gotten here mm. the the me and my wife we photographed the same model together because we're both artists so she'll paint We'll, we'll use the same model and when she's photographing i'll like hold the light and like move it to where the light looks best and she doesn't do that for me <laughs> wow dude that's like grounds for divorce i'm sorry and i'm always like she's always i'm always like damn your pictures look great and if you know anything about photographs it's all about lighting mm-hmm. and i'm like can you just like because i'm always like it's, i feel like i'm the one working the whole time like i'm like does yeah, this look yeah. good does exactly, that look good yeah. how's this lighting where you want the, you want hard lighting soft lighting blah blah do you hold those like big circular things that like reflect yeah the light? reflectors yeah. i'll and use those really. too and yeah. then she just doesn't touch it yeah no <laughs> or if i'm like can you please uh move that there and she'll do it but if not then it's just like I'm yeah, and it, it it sucks for me. But I wish I had someone like that that would move lighting to because I'm me personally. I'm like thinking like of what I like to paint. So I mean, for the most part, it's always northern lighting. But it's it's also like if you're taking a photograph of a person, the lighting of how it's hitting the face, if they're in specific angles, you're like that's gonna be hard. Because well, you, you get like a shit shadow or something. Yeah, exactly. Or like, mm-hmm. Or like all of a sudden it, it just doesn't look yeah. natural. So that's what I was talking about, like the editing. Like or just too to, much lighting and it's all flat. Yeah. And you're like, uh, there's nothing like to kind of like there's no contrast or anything. So it's just mm-hmm. you're just putting eyeballs floating in the middle of a face or something. <laughs> Does it make sense? Right. Um I know what you're talking about though. Afterwards you look at it, you're like, Oh god damn it, there's yeah. a shadow on that hand. If that hand mm-hmm. was just yeah. a little Yeah. Exactly. Well, I was looking at a a, a painting that he uh, did of one of his models and you know sometimes you need fresh eyes on it and she's holding herself in a way and the shadow of her hand lined up with the line of her body and mm-hmm. it looked like a weird tangent but mm-hmm. that's like the way it was right mm-hmm. you know so it's like little things like that where it's like you have to kind of like fudge it a little bit so it's yeah, not exactly. like a clean line or something yeah, mm-hmm. or just exaggerate the shit out of it so it yeah. looks like a stylistic choice <laughs> well that's, a, that's another thing actually uh paul and i were talking about before uh before you guys showed up we were talking about i, I get caught up in the tiniest stupid details that mm-hmm. don't fucking matter you so we no. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> like drawing fucking toenails in the fucking little like you know like, oh, like all this shit like rendering a fucking toe yeah. but we were talking about um the difference i'm curious what you guys think 
about more of a painterly approach mm-hmm. as opposed to like everything's in fucking focus. Yeah, I mean, I like all of it. Me personally, like, I like to. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I I geek out hard about like detailed shit. Like, I love that shit. It's something I I get like super focused on, and I'm into it. But then after I'm after I do that, then I'm almost like I want to do something that's the opposite of that, and just mm-hmm. like fucking splash paint around and do like fun shit. Right. <laughs> so I mean, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Do you find that when you? I find I start a painting with an intention, like, mm-hmm. oh, it's, this is going to be way different than my other stuff, uh-huh. super loose. And then as you progress, you're right back <laughs> the same style you were right I, I don't, before. I, I get don't, that a lot. I don't really fight that. Oh, you don't? Yeah. I don't, like, I, I really know that who I am. So, like, mm-hmm. so I'm like, this is, like, when I geek out on the detail shit, I already know, like, this is this part of me like this is the mm-hmm. in the process of things i'm like this is where i geek out on this shit and it's like and sometimes i need to take a break for that and i just hopefully I have another painting where i can f- fuck around with and like do the part that's more looser or whatever or painterly or whatever mm-hmm. uh and then uh like kind of put that to the wayside while i get you know i, I so i remember uh i remember being in high school i think it was 15 and i discovered frank frazetta uh-huh. mm-hmm. i remember looking at uh the death dealer painting mm. i remember like down in the bottom left he he does this brush stroke that suggests a rock right mm-hmm. i'm looking at death dealer i'm like he can't pay a fucking rock <laughs> but the thing is is you don't you're not trying to look at the fucking rock right, right. you know you want to look at death dealer you don't yeah. care about a fucking rock right in the corner but like uh-huh. it's really hard I still battle with that kind of balance, right? You know, mm-hmm. I like thinking of how the viewer is going to view the image and what's what's worth kind of spending the time geeking on, what's not worth it. Because well, just... I, I, th- I think the thing with art is a lot of us, uh, it, it becomes this, for lack of a better word, it's like this ejaculation. Like we're just kind of like, look what I can do, right. you know. So you want to like do everything like that. Mm. But you realize, but you start to realize you don't have to. Right. You know? But I, th- I think sometimes there's like personalities that just lend themselves to do that. Whenever that's the case, I'm like, I don't have a, like if, you, if your personality is a person that can just like sit at a table for eight hours and cut stencil shit, then like, go ahead, do it, man. There's someone that's going to love that shit. Yeah. I have no beef with you doing that. Like, that's your personality. That's what you're into. Fucking knock it out the park if you're like a person that wants to paint loose and like whatever do that shit i don't give a fuck like if it, even if i don't fucking like your art it's nothing i'm not gonna it's not anything negative it's just not my shit and that's how i feel about like if you're you know like if you're an abstract painter i'm not a fan but i'm not here to fucking be like fuck that shit i mean in a way i am but <laughs> when the mic's not on <laughs> <laughs> no when the mic's on so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um but yeah it's like i don't like i don't fuck with country but whoever's into it fuck with it i don't give a fuck well you you just admire you <clears throat> even if you don't like it you just admire right all right you see the skill in it you yeah. know like i there's a lot of artists that i look at that i don't necessarily like their work but i admire what they did right exactly yeah or um fuck i just lost my oh like i think the 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 big thing is that i think most artists hate is when someone feels like they're getting over on someone so like if you're an abstract painter that seems like you're full of shit Mm. you're trying to explain how your your thing all of a sudden means the universe and everything oh this is exactly what paul and i were talking about on the ride to the studio Mm. yeah it's like the like the people that do really like focused like detailed stuff whatever it's like they Mm kind of say the least and the people that do the most abstract shit right have like the biggest voice like they're like oh i was going to i was going to do this blah 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 blah, spirituality of man and how it divides into two souls and the souls fly in a east and west direction and they mean everything and you're like that sh- fucking paint splash the bitch. fuck is that like, just call it just be like i painted i splashed some paint is it is it is it upside down i don't know which way <laughs> yeah. it goes if i have one positive this thing to say about pollock it's that he he was just like i splash paint like he wasn't you know like actually with pollock i thought 
Great movie, by the way, but Ed Harris. Uh, Best thing he made. I love drinking and watching that movie. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't feel alone when I do. <laughs> but the thing with Pollock is like I didn't under I didn't I didn't really appreciate his stuff until I actually saw it in person. I've seen it. It's in person. pretty it's amazing. So it's it's in different in person. Plus, don't you guys feel like if it if not him, someone would have done that. It was like art needed to right. art needed to explore yeah, yeah. all these corners and someone was gonna do it. Yeah. I I don't disagree with that. I still don't like his shit. Hmm. But um that's my opinion. It's okay. He Jackson it. Pollock? More like Jackson Bollocks. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> but yeah, th- that uh I feel like I'm Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean I understand that. I understand like the pursuit to like like the artist pursuing every which direction and uh, and kind of, you know, uh, doing the undone, you know, and, and pursuing that. I understand that. I just, I mean, I feel like a broken record sometimes, but I just don't, I don't, I don't put too much validation to originality. Like, I don't oh. think originality is as important as a lot of people just for its own sake, it's not that. Yeah. Important. Well, it yeah. kind of becomes like, well, he did it first, kind of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think, I, I think that he did it first to me, isn't that like I don't go like, well, that means he's great. I mm-hmm. think it's. I think I I get that there is a value to that. I just don't think. I think that the the first person to do it well is much more important than, important than the first person to do it. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. So, like, I don't think the first person to do abstract art was probably that good at it, but I think he maybe, it was like a chain reaction where he created, or she, all genders included, you know what I mean? <laughs> where they, uh, where they, it's like a chain reaction, and that chain reaction created an abstract painting that I think is really well developed and good. You know what I've <clears throat> never seen is someone on an abstract up painting go oh this is terrible and why right. have you ever seen anybody say me well you have <laughs> well but like I mean, do you I, give specific no but within a like this abstract is great but this one is not good do you I, know what i mean I've, like I've there's done, a bunch of them i've done some of that but it's only based on what i think good abstract is like i have an opinion about why i think an abstract painting is good and why I think it's not. Isn't that like such a hard thing to define? Like, it, not like, for me. Oh, 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 like, but I mean, in general, I think the like, same rules apply though. They just it's abstract, but they're like where the eye travels and like yeah, the yeah. top is. It's the same stuff mm-hmm. we have. For, for me, like the abstract I geek out on is like the stuff where it reminds me of how like humans inadvertently make marks. Like I've said this before, where like if you see like a wall on the freeway. Where there was an obvious car crash, like I geek out on that mark, like because it oh, tells yeah, a that's story. Good mark, yeah. you're like oh, that person got fucked. Yeah, <laughs> and it it you can like it tells a story through just a simple mark, and I think some abstract painters pursue this like weird like where their shit kind of looks like almost like an inadvertent mark making. Like uh, I remember there was an abstract painter who they kind of remind me of how like a wall looks if a kid lives there. You know what I mean? <laughs> And that, to me, I geek out on because I go, like, I'm into that because they captured this thing. I don't even know if that's their reason. But to me, I like it because of that reason. Yeah. Wait, wait, so you know what? On the wall? You know what a tricky thing is? Is like, all right, so, you know, Jackson Pollock, you know, obviously, you know, you know, priceless, all that stuff. But it's like, what I'm curious about is, like, if you saw that next to a garbage can on right. the street, would you pick it up? Yeah. <laughs> like, who who decides that, like that's the jam right yeah we were talking about this kind of a little bit on the ride here we're like say there's an artist you like right and then they transition to different styles right mm-hmm. do we think that art is good like some we were talking about an artist we're like it was like do you like it and and i was like i kind of i don't i forget how i worded but then i was mm-hmm. like actually i don't like it mm-hmm. i just i like the artist and i like their work mm-hmm. so now that kind of work that he's doing or she is built in to the fucking work he's or she's creating now. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't actually like their work now. I just liked their work before. And I, for some reason, can't hate it because of that. Mm. Where as an artist, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want you to like my work now based off my old work. I want you to like my shit now based off my shit now. Well, I mean, it's like, 
we've got old work that is like cringeworthy to us. Mm -hmm. Like, right. Oh, you should show them that piece you did in like 2000. <laughs> or like, fuck yeah. that. Yeah. You know, you're like, no. But it's like, I'm also like, as far as artists go, I like certain artists, but I, that doesn't mean I like everything they do. Right. right exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that, and that's the thing. You have to be kind of like, sometimes you give artists pass based off of their past ex, uh, work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you're aware of that, maybe you should just say, I mean, sometimes it's very, like, you're very aware of it. You're well, like, that's like older old shit is off. You kind of get a pass because it's like, well, he did that other shit, mm -hmm. so he gets a pass. Right. You know, like, I don't know what the fuck that is, but like, you know. Right. Yeah. And, but, and, and the, the weird thing, too, is as an artist, you know. That you get stagnant with shit and you you want to pursue original shit, you know, like I want to do something new So I have to like I'm gonna go and pursue it The issue with that I find is that there is always gonna be a level of learning You know, what I mean like if I decided today, oh, I'm gonna be an abstract painter I assume that my first abstract paintings are gonna be shit, right? And that it's gonna take a while to develop into something good. Mm-hmm and I shouldn't give any artist the past because they're, ex I should understand that they're exploring the work, but not give them a past and say like, that's genius just because their old work was genius because they mm. put a shitload of work in that old work. And that's why that work was genius. The new pursuit, they need to get there and I should be. So uh, I'm okay with yeah, what's your opinion I'm okay on with that. <laughs> <laughs> with, on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with saying I'm not I don't like where this these pieces are where an artist is right now. Right. right? It's all right. Yeah. I, I appreciate artists gotta go where their where their heart takes them or whatever. For sure. Otherwise I guess it's kinda not art. Otherwise then you're just sort of like a factory, right? You're yeah. just churning out what the audience wants. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I really like the artists. The pieces, if you're true to yourself, I mean, they say that about comedy too, and, and comedians is you got to be truthful, right? And it, mm -hmm. if people can tell, and yeah. I think when your art has that truth in it, yeah, can tell, yeah, I definitely think so. Mm -hmm. That 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 uh, pursuit for truth is also just like an interesting, uh, tricky thing because I think a lot of people, um, like the the pursuing truth means they have to tell their their specific story i don't necessarily think that's true i just think it's the easiest way to pursue truth you know like mm. oh this happened to me i can say that yeah Where, i like, get what you, you're saying yeah i think you can say like god it's hard to say like, uh, like a, a thing that's like truth about humanity right. at least in your eyes yeah yeah like f like for instance a lot of my work is based off of i said this broken record again i uh but off of the two narratives of getting lost and finding home like those two narratives i am absolutely obsessed obsessed about and i think it's a weird thing where humans can instantly connect to those um those two narratives that i i can also enjoy hearing about like, that's actually that's actually a great way to boil it down yeah and like, so <clears throat> i i've like I've always been curious about you because you do, you'll, like, you'll you'll paint women with with arrows mm -hmm. a lot of times with arrows. So what's what what do you what's your meaning behind that? Arrows is just a narrative tool I use to kind of explain a past. So it's almost like, um, it's so the idea is that like an arrow is something that, uh, negatively affected you in life. That's what I use it for. So mm. if a person's filled with arrows, they just had a really shitty life and, and, and then just, they're still pushing. Yeah, exactly. And some, sometimes it, uh, the figure will explain how much the arrow affects them. So if, if it's a small arrow, it's, it's nothing to them, but it's still there. It's still left a scar or some shit, you know, it's, it's the, yeah, it's the equivalent to a scar you can say. Uh, and, um, so you, you might think about this negative thing or whatever, but in, uh, uh, fuck, I lost my, but yeah. just the idea, but going back to truth, the idea of like getting lost and finding home, there's a truth to that. That's universal, right? Like everyone has gotten lost. Everyone's found home in some shape or another through life. So like I can pursue storylines that are true that can connect with someone that aren't my story. But it's still true. So I think, uh, you know, the, the having truth behind your art is super important. I just think a lot of people get bogged down on like truth means I have to tell my story. 
I don't know. This is a random segue. I just well, no, I, I, th- I think I think every artist, either whether or not you actually realize it by looking at the piece, I think mm-hmm. every artist has like uh, there's a meaning behind the piece, right? You know, like like you can draw something that's like, oh, that's just cool shit. And you're like, no, actually, there's a big moral story behind it, right? You know, I was actually curious if you if you kind of battle with that, Paul. I was I was just gonna say there's a lot of fads that go mm-hmm. around it feels like. and now that we can see artists like right when they're done with their pieces you mm-hmm. kind of so for me like did you guys notice there was a fad of you do the face and then there's something you just fuck it up so like, you know what i'm talking <laughs> oh, yeah. about you yeah, do, it's like, it's like, like an ongoing thing yeah. yeah. it's still yeah. but it's so prominent right <laughs> yeah right. Uh, and i i'm not uh, it's cool everybody or whoever's doing it but there is a it is interesting that that like catches so I don't even know who the first was <laughs> to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's a thing. And I just want to add an aside as an artist, don't you, for me, I go, I bet he struggled with that eye. So now he, he's like, fuck <laughs> it. Right. Yeah, fuck yeah. He's kind of, I'm just going to make it arty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to. I always wonder like what those fads, if they're just like a, if it's almost like a climate thing, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, right now, like heat stroke. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like heat stroke. <laughs> but it's like, is this, if like, is like the trend, like, uh, like something that I don't know if it talks about the artist or about like, like kind of like the culture of art at the time. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, I don't know. I'm always trying to figure that out because it is weird. It is. There's like moments where illustrative style is like super in or, mm-hmm. or super painterly style, super in, or, yeah. you know, all these like abstract and all these like styles kind of like come in huge waves and, I never can figure out if it's something where the top artist is doing it and everyone's kind of super inspired by them, you know, and so everyone kind of swings that way. I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. Like, yeah. what's Kavinsky? Kanevsky? Kanevsky. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. yeah, like, I feel like a lot of people, and I, I love his stuff, too. Uh-huh. It's, right. He definitely has a lot of influence on a lot of artists. For sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. They all get the David Tell voice. Like a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, comedians talk about how you know uh, most up-and-coming artists sound like David Tell in New York right, or whatever. Yeah. And it's before this, it was Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's like this... this beacon of greatness that everyone kind of flocks to. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely think Konevsky has some of that. Um, I heard it called, like, I don't know, they're ch- even, like, trying to coin a term for it. Something like destructured realism. Something. Oh, like, yeah. I, I hate how people label shit. <laughs> like, it's the worst. Being a fucking box. Like, people are like, like, oh, you draw? Like, what kind of art do you do? I was like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, it's like. <laughs> That's uh, when you say your mom's art. <laughs> yeah, it's like detailed illustration. I'm like, no, I don't fucking know. Right. You know? Yeah. And kind of once it gets a label, it's kind of dead then. Because yeah. once yeah. the label's there, it's everybody's true, just yeah. going to tag it. And mm-hmm. it, uh, right. I mean, for, whenever I get that question, my reaction is always like, I'm just going to show you because I hate yeah. explaining. No, that's what, exactly, Paul, that's yeah. what <laughs> Paul and I were talking about on the ride here. We were mm-hmm. saying, like, like we, we do this work so we don't have to explain it. Right. Like, it's like, it's kind of like, exactly. like, mm-hmm. like, what do you draw? It's like. If I told someone I draw like a fucking drunk chimp, they'd be like, "What the fuck are you?" <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I was like, uh, "Here's my artwork," right. you know, like, "Oh, follow me back." I'm like, oh, "Fuck that." <laughs> yeah. But we were talking about that. Paul and I were talking about that on the way. Yeah, it, we're professional. I mean, if if the job is to say something through your art, why the fuck would I be a professional at saying something? rather than sh- like the visual version of it, it's like I spend all my time making an image that says something rather than saying something with my fucking mouth. Yeah, it speaks, it's, it's speaking yeah. for you. Exactly. It's like, I can't explain this. I don't have the ability through my face to say, to explain this. Well, cause we see it in our head and then we have to actually like, and then it's like, ah, oh, fuck, I have to show everyone else. Right. And so you do it and you show everyone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. You, you ever have it where you were, um, someone's like, Oh, blah, blah. And you, the, like you do art is like a, 
topic that comes up and you can tell that they're like, Oh fuck, I shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> and then you like they're like, What kind of art do you do? And you show them, they're like, Oh, you're actually good. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, that's definitely like, happening. Because they're like, yeah, like you make a living doing this? Like <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're just expecting like just, like some shit art, you know? Yeah. And they're just like, Oh, cool, what art do you do? And you show them they're like, What well, wow. Yeah, well, you're, exactly. You don't suck. I was get re- getting ready to be yeah. like, cool, thank you, bye. Yeah, they, thought, um, they thought you dabbled. Yeah, yeah, I did some of that, like, uh, what's that shit called? Oh, it was a pouring art. A pouring art, you ever <laughs> seen that? <laughs> what, With the spin that? where it spins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this. Oh, wait, is that how they used to like do like t-shirts and shit? Like, no, it's <laughs> Santa Cruz it Beach of... Boardwalk. They used to have that piece of paper. And oh, yeah. oh, yeah. What yeah. are they called? Like spiral graphs or whatever they're called? Yeah, yeah. that shit. <laughs> um, like, like the people that like... Uh, on the street that do like the the space scapes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Sorta, yeah. Everyone's marveling at it. I know. I want That's to know where worst. they learn that. Like they all have the same technique. Where it's is all, that? It's all. It's, it's like just one of... video or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just buy your frisbee. Buy your fucking. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's the worst when someone's like, Oh, I got some art I bought from Vegas. You're like, uh, don't talk to me, please. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't care. I don't care. They're like, it's a planet and gal. You're like, I know what it is. You didn't have to say anymore. You said yeah. Vegas. I know. You, you know I it love could have is, been dancing olives. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I, I love when you, you haven't seen someone for a while and they're like, are you still drawing? <laughs> right. Yeah, like, oh, no, nah, yeah. I just ditched that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're like high school friends. They're like, I still got that drawing. Like, please don't show me. (laughs) Please don't show me the drawing I did in high school. Um, Yeah. Yeah, That shit is a weird. Those are those weird art interactions that are unique. So you don't. Uh, you you kind of go from what I understand. You go for more like with your artwork, like the finished piece. Like you don't. Do you sketch at all? Or like, do you have like a sketchbook where you just like kind of fuck around, doodle ideas? I do sketches. I go to a, a figure drawing there's a long pose mm-hmm. here at caesar chavez if anybody okay wants to. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. so i'll do that every week on monday i do that nice. and then madrone art bar has drawings so i i just do those mm. but then the pieces you see me do here those are i'm got an idea i got reference i'm just right. i'm just doing it but do you- i don't i don't have like the sketchbook i have to admit mm-hmm. like i don't but do you ever get like you know when you get uh, like if you're doing life drawing and you get a really good pose and you're like holy shit I could turn this into a piece do mm-hmm. you get that? No, I just really once once the models left because I don't got photo reference I'm like that's it's I'll, good practice. I'll use those sketches side. for like a model. Like I'll bring I like bring my sketches and I'm like oh really I'm like can you do something similar to this pose? Mm, yeah like, oh, okay. Like once I see a pose that a model does even if I'm at the weird angle where I'm like my angle sucks but i can kind of see the pose i'm like mm-hmm. i really like that pose i'm gonna like try to figure out how to get so the model you just, pose. You just yeah. like show her some pornography and be like can you do something like that? <laughs> well she's most likely gonna be nude or something so it's like i don't have to show i could just show her a mirror <laughs> if i'm more curious about the faces because you have uh-huh. very distinct do you say make that how do you say make that face i like <laughs> well i don't know i used to i used to try to do that but it doesn't there's like little tricks i learned like uh like um like like how to like direct them because i'm so bad at it Mm -hmm. so i learned like a lot of times like uh having their mouth slightly opened is like a is like a very fun way to paint a mouth so i'm always like open your mouth slightly and i'm like a little bit more a little bit more a little more until you get there and like Perfect. And then, uh, really, you tell them to open their mouth, like, and not in a weird way. I'm not saying any weird shit, uh-huh. but like, like, just to get the like, kind of. I, I know there's no video on this, but like, it's it's to get what I want to do. It's almost like how your mouth is positioned now. It's it's to get like the like the top teeth, like the like the yeah. four top teeth, just kind of relaxed, and then like the lips. I like getting that dark like background to like contrast against the lips like all these like little things it's like so they don't have that like resting bitch face look yeah or they're not smiling or anything like i don't want Mm, that's a thing i mean i if you don't know what we're talking about then edit (laughs) (laughs) resting face uh nate did not say resting bitch face earlier he said resting lady like face (laughs) <laughs> resting upstanding citizen <laughs> <laughs> but um there's like i've learned 
so like the tools I've learned to like direct a la- girl is like or lady or I don't a woman sure whatever well, any of those binary. pick one <laughs> just don't say child <laughs> yeah, never a child one hundred percent never a child um, but <laughs> but uh, I I try to explain the concept I have that's like real number one because sometimes they can like do shit with it that I. They just are like, oh, okay, I can like pull my face. Cause sometimes you're like, they're trying to look like sexy or whatever. And you're like, mm-hmm. this is about heartache. And they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. totally red. They're totally doing the wrong thing. And right, then they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll like do something. And you're like, cool. That worked perfect. And then I, then there's like little, like point your face here, put your eyes here, you know, like those kind of things. Like, right. But you don't have like, look like you look when you no it doesn't work for me okay. when i'm like look angry or look upset then they just become a caricature you know they're right. like they're just like super angry you're like all right this is i feel like maybe an actor might be better at that because they have subtleties in those like in that world mm-hmm. maybe yeah he had uh paul did a, a model of a, a woman uh lower figure and uh she did something with her hands and she had the the uh she had the the way her pinky yeah, was placed that was on just own. beautiful. I know. Mm-hmm. You pinky. couldn't tell if someone no. like, oh, put your pinky over there. No, she just yeah. knew. That's like when they're really good, they know little I know. secrets. I have like when a... they drink their tea, they lift up their pinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hands mm-hmm. are like some of the times the hardest things to direct. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the things that you didn't notice that they were fucking up. And then when you go back to being like, that's always the worst. Yeah. Ah, that sucks. <laughs> I just yeah. ruined that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and then and that's you, the hardest thing to make up. Yeah, like to try and go from your head or whatever. Yeah, and then the models that are like always good at that. You're like, I know. Fuck, <laughs> you know how to like exaggerate your your fingers in some <laughs> yeah. weird way. You're like, you th- no, um, it just shows that it's a talent like, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, mean, look, where where Paul? Where do you get your models from? Madrone Art Bar, they have their. You get the, just, what, what, whenever what the there's ones, a good the one, I just hire. make a oh. note. Oh, really? Oh, their okay. Instagram, get idea. their Instagram, yeah. and then I've definitely you know got artists have a from thing Life that, Drawing to, or models from Life Drawing class too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, like you, if you've there's got a good them? one. Mm-hmm. I have a thing. Yeah, where, yeah. If somebody that I like at a Life Drawing class, um, I'll end up um, getting their info afterwards. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, so I remember I was doing Life Drawing, and I would actually go to this class, and I was like. Ten dollars or something. It was years ago, and uh, I would actually get the list of the models ahead of time because I'm like, okay, that guy just stands there naked holding a fucking pipe. You yeah. know, like that is fucking boring. And he's right. his that body info? is like a tank. It's like that is boring. <laughs> like, and then you get these models that just like create like it's like for for an artist, it's it's better than any kind of pornography or anything it's like oh my god that pose is fucking <laughs> made. like that the, that line in that back holy shit yeah <laughs> yeah i get when when i tell a model an idea and then she does something that i had no like thought about i get so fucking excited i'm like my yeah. heart's racing i'm like i know fucking <laughs> hell like hopefully i don't fuck it up with my picture taking abilities <laughs> yeah. you know it's like i know i'm just like holding finger down just like 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 just trying to get you know the other thing is i i i started doing life drawing when i was 15 and i was talking to my friends uh and you know it'd be male and female and uh um and like my buddies would be like you're drawing dicks and stuff i'm like dude like it's it's just life drawing like i you know you're drawing these beautiful women you're drawing guys whatever and it's like you know what i will say in all the life drawing i've done and paul and i were kind of talking about this i never i've seen some beautiful women but it's work and i've never gotten an erection right never got an erection because it's just like you actually see it differently i I was doing one and a guy it's he was getting a semi it was starting to rise (laughs) and just watch this drawing he's just like scribbling on a page (laughs) he's just like not doing i put it it in my draw i was like this is a one time (laughs) i wonder what he was thinking about like Uh, please stop how does did you look at his work (laughs) did you look at his artwork Wait, we're talking about the, no, model. the model. He's saying, the model. "Oh, oh!" <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an artist like getting yeah. a, no, a the chip. models, the that male is, models. It just kept fucking going north. It was, yeah. 
Wow. That's awesome. I like his style. You know, models are so used to getting naked that I Mm -hmm. think for them, it's not, it's just not a big deal. Well, they will actually. For us, it's a huge thing, but to them, it's really. They would, like, in the life drawing classes I would take, they would actually, like, after they finished, there's certain models they would, like, instantly robe up. Yeah. Right. And then there's certain models that were yeah, like, they walk around, around naked. Yeah, yeah, they just look at yeah, your shit. They don't care. Yeah. 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 And That's good true. for them, right? Mm-hmm. You know, for me personally, what I look for is I don't want tattoos on the model. And that's pretty rare these mm. days. Partly, Sean Barber's got that covered. <laughs> right. But also, I don't want to paint other people's right. art. Yeah. Yeah. So. I just omit it usually. Yeah, do, same. But, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I incorporate it depending on if I want to do it, do yeah. something with the the tattoos well, themselves, like, but I usually change them a lot by the time I, so I Sergio, paint them. So with your pieces, like the way you incorporate the, the floral aspect with uh-huh. the models, do you do that? Is that kind of like something you just do on the fly or do you actually no, prep it's, it? No, it's all like I I do some Photoshop filters to, to get it started. And uh, yeah, a lot of times that's how I first started doing that because uh, the model that I had or that I first used had tattoos and I incorporated because she had like these rose, um, pa- not even pattern. They were just roses that were her tattoos on her back. So I just incorporated the the vintage floral pattern into it with Photoshop. Oh, oh that's okay. the genesis. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those axi- ax- yeah. Uh, happy, happy action. accidents for sure. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Bob Rouse. I, <laughs> I, I've heard that like artists, uh, like they're... I, like the the themes in an artist's work throughout their lifetime, mm-hmm. like they generally have like maybe four or five themes. Mm. You know, like everyone draws a fucking skull. Okay, like mm-hmm. I've done a bunch of skulls. I got a chimp. I got this. I got that. But it's mm-hmm. like I I feel like a lot of artists have a basis mm-hmm. of like the go to. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like you get not in a bad way, but you kind of like uh, you're like oh it's my jam, and you just right. do that until you are sick of it. And then if you're lucky, you find another one. Yeah. I I think when I, when I pay attention to like the artists that I think are good for long periods of time, you know, we talked earlier about how some artists will like, they'll do one thing and then they'll like do a complete different thing that you're like, I'm not into that shit at all. And I think the people that I like, usually they have a base and their base grows mm-hmm. and it might like shift slightly this way or shift slightly that way but their base is always kind of there and it's if you think about it like musicians or something that's like when a musician they have an audience and then they decide like fuck that audience i want to do fucking country music you know or whatever and the audience is like what the fuck man like that was my shit and you just decided that you don't care about this shit and that's kind of where i think I mean, I don't think I'm going to think about the audience, but I think sometimes the audience will take offense based off of your actions. Sometimes. So I'm curious, like, and this, this goes for myself as well, and I'm curious about you guys. Uh, do you guys uh, get scared about trying a new approach? No, I'm pretty careless about that. <laughs> I have because no I, audience, I, I, so for me, I, it if, if, if I spice it up, I'm like, oh, this is fucking rad. They're like, what the fuck is that? Right. You know, like. Like, it's interesting to change your shit up. Yeah. You know? I mean, I was doing, like, mixed medium for a long time, and then I switched to oil paint being, like, the pre, like the, the main kind of medium I use. And I had, like, galleries being like, oh, we like your old stuff. Like, no more. Like, we're not pretty much in, like, fewer words, just, like, we're not going to be working together because we like that shit, not this shit. Well, uh, so I'm curious is, uh, Sergio, is Paul said you have a few different Instagrams. Yeah. So what? 38. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that is interesting because I barely post on my one. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have three. Three. Yeah. Plus waiting to dry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think like. You feel like they're different audiences for like your landscapes. And oh, your- absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, the reason I first split it was because when I was posting everything on the main loop one, every time I post the landscape, I would lose followers. No kidding. And I would, no uh, shit. Yeah. I would gain like 
different followers from that, but uh, I definitely saw the numbers drop every time I They're, posted. The guys were just like, we're here for nudes and flowers, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so it's like, in uh, way, yeah. so if you've got landscapes and you've got, say, a gallery or a client, mm -hmm. you send them that one, right? Is that like kind of thing? Um, Kind of, yeah. I mean, it depends, really. Yeah, I definitely don't send nudes to the gallery that Don't shows send my nudes landscape. to anyone, Sergio. <laughs> hey, if they're in demand, why not? <laughs> it, yeah, it, I, I kind of got in a little bit of trouble last year for um, for a, a show that I did at the landscape, the gallery that I show landscapes at, because um, I sent them a, a nude and people just did not like it. Like that, that, um, um, the clients of that gallery didn't like it and i kind of <laughs> blabbered about that and kind of trashed the, the the clientele a little bit so i had to to backpedal a bit about that so and just like all right i gotta like separate things just to keep it a little bit more professional i guess <laughs> there is i definitely think there's sort of a different audience landscape people that there's a quaintness and they right. might definitely want their nudes covered up i <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess it's not a new thing right yeah <laughs> they're into oxymorons <laughs> well, wait, yeah what's interesting is like people uh i remember the the first show i first real show i did at 111 minna with uh coro actually mm -hmm. it was a two-man show and i drew this really like a lot of visceral shit like mm -hmm. like yeah. really like that kind of stuff and then i I drew, I, I remember I drew four animals, like a koala bear and giraffes and shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because it's a lot of times people are like, they just think you can just draw that one thing. So I showed the fucking animals sold. The other shit, a buddy of mine who works in film, he's like, I like your stuff, but I can't fucking hang it. Right. And I'm just like, yeah. and it changes you. you I don't want to say you like play to the market, but it changes it does have an influence on the work right. you do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And in some ways it's like, maybe if you were in the right gallery where they curate to like people that are into fucking dark imagery, cause there's people that have shitloads of money who are into like, who are fucking high school Gothic kids that made a shitload of money. And they're like, they're like, I like dark shit and mm -hmm. your shit I, I connects did, with me. I did a piece of a woman cutting her stomach up and I'm like, I don't know why the fuck mm -hmm. Mina hung it, but <laughs> not only that, but I'm like, like why did why did I draw it and why would anyone want to buy that? Well, Someone's they, out there. They for say sure. every every piece you do is a self portrait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Shit. laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess I just had an abortion on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and edit. <laughs> Nate did not just say he had a self abortion there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. That I some sometimes it's I think it's that. It's like I think sometimes the gallery the, they have their opinion, but maybe it's just it's just the wrong gallery for But yeah, like do people get weirded out if you draw a dude or if you paint a dude cuz you do a lot of women. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. uh they will, but I mean, I don't know. People are people can have their own opinions about shit. If I, if I do something, usually it's with intent, yeah. you know, it's, it's so like right now I'm painting a female who She's looks cutting her stomach open. <laughs> she, <laughs> she very much looks like a guy cause she's wearing a baseball cap and it just, you know, like she, she's already kind of like on that, like edge of being masculine or feminine. Mm. Um, and so, like, I'm cur I'm like wondering how that's going to be perceived. But I don't even know if people are going to be able to tell it's a female unless I like tag the model or add her or some shit. But she's like, she's a very beautiful woman. But she has features that if you put a baseball cap on her and like don't show any like body parts, all of a sudden she looks like a man in a weird way. What, was this uh, one of your models? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and so I made her dress a certain way and. Uh, well, like in like a lot of intent, but uh, I, but I'm sure people are gonna be weirded out that I painted a guy, even though I didn't. And uh, but you know, it's 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 weird when people get like uh, caught up on like the things that are 
not so it's like i'm assuming when sergio sh- had the nude in the art thing he probably didn't think that it was going to be controversial or anything you know he's like, he's no. like this is nothing like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's been done for centuries yeah exactly yeah it's not like i've never showed nudes there either yeah. so like going to the like going and looking at renaissance paintings you're not like oh, you know it's like <laughs> right they um, really they, sergio they really freaked out about it being the nudes um it wasn't so much that it was just nude in general they just didn't really like the painting itself they just saw things in it that i just wasn't so you've intended got, for them to you've see got like split, I guess. you're like split personalities so you're like i'm <laughs> this person to this person i'm that person to that person so Which it's one's like a way if you're showing yeah. Yeah, all of them <laughs> but that if you're showing that, like that's the the females cutting themselves up in that <laughs> but if you're showing like do you for like so when you do landscapes you enjoy doing landscapes yeah mm-hmm. so but you just know that you've got a different audience yeah yeah, and that was just something I had to realize just doing uh, doing fine art professionally for long enough that certain people just aren't going to be as in, into everything I do. <laughs> so uh, you, uh, you've recently been doing uh, animal portraits. You just tell us about that, yeah, that yeah. one you just did. <laughs> that that got like an award. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was for um, the Trickell pet portrait competition. Where you dry ten? <laughs> yeah, WTD ten. 10 yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, Trick- our Trickell, that's the uh, that's like uh, Crayola has brushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're our sponsor to our podcast. Yeah, so you can pick up those oh, really? Crayola brushes yeah. and get ten percent off on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, don't you have a button for that? Or yeah, <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for lining that up for us, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Another waiting to dry exclusive. <laughs> so uh, are you uh, how'd you get into how'd you get into the animal portraits? Um it was something I just kinda done off and on um over the years. Uh, the first time I did one was for um a theme show that the gallery was doing where uh, it was just animal theme. So I uh, hit up my friends that had pets at the time. I was like, I'll do your portraits for the show. So well, the, the dog was nude. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was offended. <laughs> uh, so for you, you have a similarity kind of to, to Sergio in that you seem to have a, like a landscape, like a city landscape. And now you're seeming to pursue like, uh, like, uh, the female figure as another, like kind of direction of your work. Uh, how do you feel about, like, do you see like that you are going to kind of pursue both maybe equally or something like that? Or I want to be able to do a uh, figure landscape mm-hmm. and still life. Mm-hmm. Just always keep that that way. You never, you're known for all three, and right. that way I can. That pretty much covers everything in reality, right? I yeah. Mean, Person plays her thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I like that. For sure. You just can go between them, but I, for me, it's just like what I need to work on, and I feel like figure was something that I really wanted to go hard. I did a lot of portrait with the, the art teacher I was talking about. I did mm-hmm. a lot of portraits, but I never did a lot of figures. So now with the classes or the the art sessions I go to, I'm digging deep into the figure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a, I, I always I think we all just want to continue lear- learning. Otherwise, right. you know, it kind of gets stale. Yeah. The, yeah. That's kind of the thing where the artist does like something new. But like, I totally understand that urge to just because you, you then end up learning a shitload of things you you had no idea about, which is for me as an artist is like the most geeked out or the most fucking excited I am about something when I'm in some new realm that I have no kind of knowledge about. I'm like, cool. I get to learn everything right now. Everything's like taking 10 steps forward rather than like where you're almost secure in your skills. It's like, I took a little notch forward, a little notch forward, a little notch forward. And well, the, the best pieces are the ones you're terrified of. Yeah. You know, hmm. yeah. like you don't want to be like a factory. Yeah. I don't want to be a factory artist. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. And figures are, they're hard. Yeah. They're, they're hard. I've heard <clears throat> figures are hard. I've heard that cars are up there and then mm-hmm. above cars mm-hmm. are musical instruments cars like are really like musical a instruments yeah really? like a saxophone with all that, that yeah that, that that's work. fuck that yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> fuck that <laughs> that's why that's why so, I'm, so I'm gonna add, so, I, so i don't like drawing cars dogs cats and now saxophones <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna add that to the, the only musicians no i play portraits in your or, future uh, <laughs> fuck that no, no one would buy it <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck a saxophone. <laughs> that thing doesn't make any sense in general. <laughs> uh, it has its place occasionally. <laughs> I suppose. Ken, um, Kenny G's crying right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Saxophones. So what, what do you hate drawing or painting? What do you guys hate? I'm not a big fan of cars, but I do them every once in a while to be like, yep, still hate that well, thing. Well, you know, the yeah. thing with cars is like you can draw like a... Like say a VW bug, mm -hmm. you're like I know what a VW bug looks like, but you need it's a Twinkie reference. with wheels. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you you you're a foodie, um, <laughs> but it's it's like you need like you need reference, right. you know? Like you, you, I know what a VW bug looks like, but you have to like cars actually, are easy to fuck up. Yeah, they yeah, are really super are. easy. You're like that. Well, that looks like some Flintstone shit, right? right? You know, because they have weird angles too. Yeah, so like the, the perspective. Yeah. Is all like fuck because it's like if it's a block it makes sense but they have like a slight slope and you're like well now it doesn't make sense when what, i look what, at it well, you know when brain. you get you know when you get mad at your french curve because it's not doing the right curve you're like fucking french curve like Wait, it's not getting the uh, right curve on the fucking hood or something i've, I've never, never used, used one french <laughs> curve really? no. wow you guys still use uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's that's illustration. Yeah, mm. you're just a, you guys. You guys use abacuses, right? <laughs> yeah. What's an abacus? <laughs> it's a shit that goes on the moon. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're really gone. <laughs> 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 we're really... <laughs> we, we 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 teetering on conspiracy theories now. <laughs> Kurt Cobain was murdered <laughs> <laughs> by his wife. <laughs> oh fuck yeah. <laughs> I don't know nothing, but I heard, I heard that's a theory. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> uh, how do we segue? <laughs> uh, so, art. <laughs> that's how you do it. So. Uh, fuck yeah. So, like, let's let's see. This is actually something. Uh, so, I've been here at the studio for five and a half years. Mm -hmm. So, I'm kind of, I've been here the longest. Mm hmm uh, but what I'd be curious about is like, like Paul's take on this because, uh, where our studio is, there are not many like it left. It's, it's basically a dying breed for sure. Mm -hmm. And Paul was telling me about like looking at other studios before he came here mm -hmm. and the, the shit market that it was, it was like, Oh, here's a corner for like 800 bucks. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. It's like how San Francisco, we went from Kurt Cobain to like studio spaces, but, um, it's a. You, go ahead. I Paul. think you kind of were looking for a scene. You want a right. little something. And I wasn't seeing it elsewhere. Sure. Uh, a lot of abstract elsewhere. <laughs> 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 oh, what, weren't you saying like you weren't you looking at a space and you're like, I oh, wanted fuck to see. That. I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I wanted to see impressive art. Shit Just happened. like you were saying, where you feel like, oh. This oh look what he's doing yeah yeah I don't want to she's doing I, or I just wasn't that impressed so whatever uh, yeah uh, no yeah. that makes sense you and, and inspired. also they have it's there's very little spaces left in the city mm -hmm. and the spaces that they have there's if you want your actual own room right that's really hard to get mm -hmm. otherwise you're mm -hmm. in these big big halls and you've got this one thing that you can lock up mm -hmm. it's, it's I, I, I don't know it's tough I got a question how long were you in the studio before you peed in the sink? Oh, I did that right away. <laughs> oh, he's got I, a I pee glass. He's got a pee glass over I there. I have a glass. I used, Wait, what? <laughs> nice. I used to mix paint in it, and he's like, "Oh, that's my pee. That's my pee glass." I'm like, "Son of a bitch!" So I'm I can, not as tall as Nate, so I, I can't reach. I can the fucking sink. reach it. But yeah, like, it's tough for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's his name? Um, fucking um, that guy. That guy, Afro short. Oh, Henry Lewis. Henry Lewis. There we go. <laughs> oh, he's he's like he, he, he's he short. Told, he told me when I moved in here. He's like the knowledge was passed on. Oh yeah, it was it was like this this heritage. He's like, hey, so I pee in the sink. I'll never tell you where. I'll never tell you where my glass is. <laughs> and I'm like, so I just rip it out. I think it's the fucking, same glass. Oh, I'm using. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, used to, I used to mix paint in that shit. I always assumed that he just had a spot on arc. Like he was just like, he was like a <laughs> yeah. three point shooter. He was just fucking nailing it every time. <laughs> I remember, uh, uh, I remember, like uh, when there's been like a new guy in the studio. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, 
and, and you know, I've got a little sauce in me. I'm like, oh, by the way, we pee in the stew. <laughs> we pee in the sink. And I just rip it around and just like flop it out and just piss in the sink. It's like, you're like this, I don't think this tradition is going to fly much longer because we have two women now at the studio. Uh, yeah. Oh, they're hopefully not. Yeah, they, they can pee in the sink. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Equal opportunity, yeah, right? Yeah. They're, just, they're just like, they just pop a squat on it. They're just yeah. like, yeah. You're like you're getting something out of the fridge, and they're like, "Oh, don't mind me." <laughs> exactly. Dude, By the way, this the takes place when, I've, when I've it, peed this in the only sink. happens when no one else is here, at least for me. I've <laughs> I've peed in the sink. I think like three times now. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, when you're... we're doing this thing, when we drink too much, I'm like, <laughs> like I pee in the sink. I'm like, all right, well then I guess I'll pee in it too. Fuck it. The bathroom's too far away. <laughs> it is. I know. I'm, I feel weird now because usually it's just like us three. Yeah. So I'm like, well, so, I'll, so pee I, in the sink. I'll give you like a boost or something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I peed in it. I just I feel weird with more people here. It's like as I feel more offensive. It's like oh Nate pees in the sink. It's okay if I do. If he pees in the sink, I can. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like no, no one else does. Oh, okay, have you peed in the sink, Sergio? I tried. Can I reach? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go pee in the sink. <laughs> uh, oh. I just assumed everyone here peed in the sink. No, well, Henry told me about that. You're right. And I just assumed everyone else did. I was like, I, I think, like, well, no, because well, the thing they is, will. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the thing is, the problem is, is like the, the sink is not good drinking water. Right. Mm. It's not potable. Put, yeah. If you put it in a glass, it's fucking brown. Ugh. So I like when people move into the studio, I'm like, don't drink the water, but you can pee in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bigger problem yeah. is the bathroom's far away and it's mm -hmm. creepy it's not a there's now shit stains on the wall on that oh really, <laughs> really? <God damn>. abstract <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <As> impressionist <laughs> uh, what does it mean <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh fuck Jeez. i don't know uh, this we really went <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're fuck deep. off the rails here <laughs> uh, you just got hit with a classic <laughs> waiting to try waiting tangent to try. <laughs> Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Hell yeah. We're done with P-Talk? P-Talk's done? Yeah, well, <laughs> we're done with that PP talk <laughs> For now. So I've got a question. Like, I lament over it a lot of times. Mm -hmm. have a hard time with it is pricing your artwork. Mm -hmm. I hate pricing my artwork. Yeah. So how do you guys approach, like, why is that worth, you know, $1,000 if not $10,000? Do, uh, do you want to go first or go? a lot of it is just like what you could sell it for if you can find somebody to buy it for that then it, a lot of it is just like it is a weird thing because it is such a subjective thing to figure out how to price it but for me um i have like certain formulas that, that josh and i have talked about like the yeah. validity of like pricing by size and like you're not into that at all right well some people like, do it by like square part. inches yeah and i for the most part i do it that way just because uh, keeps things consistent between me and the gallery um if i need to um if i'm selling a piece at like a outdoor painting of uh, sale or something like that versus my gallery it's an easy equation to figure out like okay i can sell this pl nine by twelve plein air piece for for this amount and maybe i'll I'll um, bump it up a little bit for the gallery, but it, it at least gives me a good baseline to start with. Do you ever price a piece higher because you like it? Sometimes I'll, I'll give it a little bump, but for the most part, I try to keep it as consistent because it, it is like I for it might be something for for me if I like a piece. It doesn't necessarily mean the buyer uh, or the the viewer will like it as much as I do. So it's. Uh, it's it gets tricky when um, you just have your own like when you price by emotion like that. Yeah. Well, you, you, I you know when you have the killer yeah. pieces though, kind of don't you re feel like I this piece is I know this is the standout. No. Um, but I guess wrong so oh, many really? times with oh, that. Right. So well, you know it more doesn't now. really work for me. Well, all the, the, time. the piece you put on the flyer usually sells. <laughs> so I know, I know that much. I, 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 me and Sergio disagree on this like way of pricing because yeah, he he's like a square inch guy, mm -hmm. which I, I mean, do whatever the fuck you want. Really, at the end of the day, I understand like that model because it makes sense to the gallery. I just think 
that model is based off the ignorance of the gallery and i should I, me personally i'm like fuck that i if if there's a piece i like i i like that's the piece that's going to be the most expensive i've had a show where the smallest piece was the most expensive <laughs> and it was the one that sold first mm -hmm. it's like what was it just because you really liked the piece or it was special to you uh i really liked the piece and i also thought it was the best piece i like looking at the work i was like this one just seems to be the best piece mm. and so i priced it as such and i got like uh one person came up to me like why is the smallest piece more expensive than the biggest piece and i was like because it's the best and they were like yeah. but i want that piece and i'm like yeah Exactly. Of course you want that piece, because it's the best fucking piece. <laughs> so so how, how do you price your stuff, Paul? Uh, <laughs> I didn't... I'm, I'm still learning from you guys. <clears throat> I think I priced it wrong. Like, I, I'm still... I'd go between these two ideas, and I think try and keep it as low as possible for as long as possible, honestly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this, you guys talked about last time, the... Year, your rebate. Oh, with Nicholas Arebe? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's interesting. I don't quite, I feel like there's two ways to look at that. Like he could dash it off for right. 250. Mm -hmm. uh, like, is he going to spend a lot of time on a painting that's 250? Right. But there's something right. interesting that he's saying, like, because I think, honestly, I'm seeing, I go see lots of other art when artists, show, I'm not seeing as many red dots, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. Right. I think, like the Nicholas Arebe thing, he, the thing that's, so that's the thing where like ignorance comes into play for me is that is that we have to understand that there are some artists that geek out on the details and it takes them forever and th that artwork isn't isn't like shouldn't be thrown to the wind right so like we have to understand that that shit takes a long time and that we should appreciate it for that yeah. where also some people paint very fast and that art isn't devalued because it's fast because they might be just as good as the art that took just as long in a weird you know what i mean like and nicholas Arebe paints really fast he can fish mm -hmm. it a piece in like an hour and you're like okay well that's like that makes sense that you're, you can sell something for 250 but there's also artists that take forever and it's fucking amazing and then you go like well they shouldn't sell it for 250 because they spent fucking two months on that shit no i i've, I've done a piece where i spent you know a week on it and it's right. like a 400 hundred dollar piece or some right. shit you know like nothing against that but it's like it's my my thing is my attention to detail it's mm -hmm. like i actually want to be proud of the piece right so i'm not one of those guys that fucking bangs it out so he can get a paycheck right. like i'm one of those guys that like wants to hurt selling it right you know <laughs> and generally that hurts your bank account because you're fucking you're doing that right you know and i think this is where like the like the ignorance versus the education of a gallery should exist it's like you should be able to explain why a piece that's the same size as that piece is way more because mm. we have to appreciate the time and effort it took to make that piece and that is on the gallery in my opinion that is on their end of explaining to the buyer why they should appreciate that piece and why it costs that much well i think a lot of the galleries uh they, I don't think they see that. I don't think a lot of galleries see that. I, right. I think a lot of galleries are probably threatened by social media because right. they're closing galleries. Right. And I think they're like, oh, why can't we take half of your half of your piece? Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I can fucking ship it off myself and right. like keep it all. And I, oh, and I don't have to frame it. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah. like framing everything, shipping, it goes into it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And. It, yeah if I, i've had conversations where i put a piece into a gallery and they're like whoa that's overpriced and i'm like no it's not that's not what it is and they're like oh well that's more than the last time that you showed with us and i'm like all right well and then the piece sells and they're like whoa that piece sold and i'm like yeah because that's how much it was fucking worth you don't maybe you didn't understand because you only see a size and you go like this size is this much that but it's okay. like i yeah. can understand how much that piece is worth because you know i i think i think pricing to go to the the point of what we're talking about, I, I feel like pricing is like a gut feeling. Yeah. Like, it's not like you're just trying to get rich or anything like that. You're not like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm fucking, I'm gold plated. I'm amazing. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like sometimes you look at a piece and you're like, it's not something you make up. You're like, 
that piece is worth that. Right. And a lot of times we fucking undersell ourselves anyway. Right. You know? And I think there's a baseline to every artist. You have like a baseline of like, you know, a pace I kind of like, I'm never going to sell it under this much, you know? And, and that baseline will vary throughout time, hopefully going upwards. Uh, and hopefully that doesn't affect your sales. But I think. Well, that's what's actually really difficult is to actually. Uh, to change uh, your price point mm -hmm. is a really difficult and risky thing to do. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you could go like, oh, this piece is five hundred dollars, and then you say like, no, this now, you know, this piece is six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and they're like, and all of a sudden you don't get buyers. Right. Yeah. You know I've definitely I gotten pressured into, um, like, galleries have tried to tell me to raise my prices like against my better judgment and it never works out right or it never works out well when i do that for sure do you guys get people that come in and you find out from the gallery that they said oh someone came in they want this for this amount mm -hmm. do you do get that yeah, they yeah when they want a discount <clears throat> yeah yeah so oh, they actually do like a bro price or something they try to do that yeah. I'm just wondering if there's a lot of customers that just I'll, I'll buy it, but yeah. I only want to pay this. Rich much people for... are cheap as fuck. Oh, yeah, you know what the the they're the biggest the hagglers. Yeah, the most expensive. Like, I've done expensive pieces, and it's like it's the most difficult. It's like kind of like, oh, can you change this? Can you change right. that? Mm. As opposed to people like, yeah, I mean, it's difficult. It's a, uh, it's it's the the thing is it's. Pricing is so fucking abstract. Mm -hmm. Who's to say it's it's as worth my my old construction buddy uh, Hillary? Like he told me, Hill, uh, but he he told me he's like it's as worth it's worth as much as they will pay for it. Right. You know, like who's to say that this piece is worth that much or that much? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, you don't want to fucking have all your paintings stowed away in your closet. So there is some like sacrifice a lot, of, like not a lot of times, but some of the times where you are like, I can't raise prices too much because, uh, you know, I'm going to fucking never sell anything. And why the fuck even show it? If you're, well, I, I think that's like the fear of every artist is like, I will never sell another piece of art. I will never right. get another job. And I've talked to Paul about this of when, we were talking about this with his uh, Madrone show. When you bring it back home, and ugh, fucking party foul, and uh, and you don't sell the piece, and you're like, fuck. You're I like, where do you put this? Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm running. Out of, right. Oh, I know. I'm running out of nooks and crannies to wedge right. these paintings. But I think <laughs> yeah. I think you know, going back to like trading art. If I think if more artists were open to that idea, mm -hmm. I think there would be a um. It would be a positive for sales because no one's going to, if you don't buy this shit at my price, I'm just going to get a fucking free painting for my buddy for my painting. Yeah, fuck yeah. You gave me and one guess today. What? Fine. You don't yeah. get to fucking buy that thing anymore. Got, it's oh, gone oh, forever. Oh, oh, hey, sir, you don't get a discount. Your, uh, your painting's hanging above my bathroom door just so you know that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. a good awesome. spot. I, I, I cleared it with my roommate. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going to put your space, yours Josh, because I, I don't even have a fucking room anymore. Yours is, yours is, I just hung yours next to like Chris Lieb and I think the Alex garbage Beck. can has room. Yeah, I could, yeah, it could it could go in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good one. It's a good piece. Thank you. MJ, is, I, I like my wife. MJ I was like, "What do you think of this piece? Is it good enough?" Because I don't. I fucking thought I, I was looking for another piece that I couldn't find. I don't know where the fuck it is, but um, I was like, "Is this piece good enough?" She's like, "Yeah, it's good." I'm like, "I don't know." I just after I finished painting a piece, I just fucking hate it. I don't. I don't see anything good about it, and. Uh, so she convinced me that that piece is good enough. I got one. I'm good. No, I'm. Uh, uh, we're talking about beer right now. <laughs> uh, we got a bartender no, over we're, here. That's we're like, <laughs> a beer tender. Uh, I appreciate it. But no, I. Uh, I will actually be totally honest. Like when we did that last podcast, and I was like drunkenly gave you guys pieces. Hell yeah! <laughs> I felt bad because Sergio, I gave you this monster fucking monstrosity. <laughs> yeah, I like, found a good spot in my. Take, care of this in the, well, yeah in the garage or something no no but and then and then like sergio came through with the piece and i was hanging out with my buddy roger and mm -hmm. then i will His say was it was a piece of shit and you were like okay <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> that belongs above the bathroom door <laughs> and then you, you showed up with your piece and like there was a part of me i was like 
that mf or better fucking bring a piece because i was just like i didn't give i liked that piece i really liked that piece I that i gave too. you i mean i like both of the pieces but i'm like yeah, yeah that better be you I'm know i'm still waiting two years for a piece <laughs> from Nate. fuck you this is not your podcast <laughs> i'm so no, i know so we did a we did a, I piece. Had a special request though he's got a special request he's 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 special. commissioning you for a trade well we did uh like it we did a trade because he did uh a painting because he was doing a lot of the 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 neon lights and stuff bars, like that basically mm. bars and mm-hmm. i did and he did uh mirios which is my Shh. cheers oh fuck everyone's gonna go there now um <laughs> but <laughs> there we go um but we took a photo and like i yeah yeah i got a, him the reference <laughs> I, i'm almost painted it myself i choreographed it <laughs> mm-hmm. anyway. i see that's awesome the point is, it's two years. Uh, fuck you. It'll be better in three. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's not age. getting any worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it ages like wine. <laughs> Have some more wine. <laughs> uh, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. But yeah, back to like the whole trading idea. I think if more artists just like leftover paintings are like, I'll just trade that shit with another artist. Well, you know how much we hate our shit? So right. like trade it. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, it ends up being like, if you want to buy my shit and you think it's good, but you don't want to pay the price, like you have that price, or I'm gonna trade my friend and be fucking stoked on a piece of work that I get. You, you can't. You you're, it's not a, a money thing. You're just like I'm. You're just thankful. Like I look at I, right. like uh, like Paul's painting I have hanging in the room in my apartment, and it's like I love looking at it every day. For sure. You know. Yeah. When he's not at the bar, he can look at it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <The> sweet memories. <laughs> uh, that's fucking hilarious. You just like well, look at the bar as long as you can to, and then you just run straight to your house so you can like look at the bar longer. <laughs> well, no, you know what I used to do is I used to go to I used to go to the bar and then I'd come home and I was watching, I was a. Uh, I was watching Cheers, and I was like, uh-huh. "Holy fuck, this sucks!" It's like I never left, so I had to stop watch. In season five, I had to stop watching Cheers because I was like, "This is fucking terrible." You were like ordering bar, ordering a drink at the TV. You're like, "Give me a fucking yeah. God damn it!" No, I'm, I'm, I'm like Norm. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think most fucking artists suffer with this idea of pricing your shit mm. because you want to sell it, but then you don't want to fucking devalue the work you put into it. Right. Because there is a decent amount of work that goes into your work. And I think people that don't know art actually don't understand that. Right. We're getting paid less than minimum wage. Oh, I, I, I could make burgers for cheaper. Right. Yeah. So it's or, or for more. It's, it's that like, and that's where, I mean, I really think there's just like that ignorance that I think if the galleries want to fucking keep their value, it is to educate their fucking buyers on why something is worth what it is. I think if they want to play a role where we think they're useful, I think it's that because you're not marketing anymore with fucking social media. So now it's like put in that work fucking hang out with artists enough to where you can understand because that, that's the other thing is like how many gallery owners or gallery whatever runners or whatever fucking understand the f- work that goes into this shit they don't and the, they don't yeah or any any technical abilities sometimes you'll see a gallery and they'll show something awesome then like a week or a month later and you, they got some garbage shit in there that you're like that isn't that figure is wrong all the way around. Like you obviously don't know what you're looking for because you have no technical eye. Uh, so I got an interesting question uh, for you guys. Um, I've actually done art shows before where you price it really cheap mm-hmm. and nobody buys it. And mm-hmm. then you show it again and you jack the price and everyone fucking buys this shit. You jack it. But like, not like that, but like, <laughs> you know, I, you, I've done, I did a show in Marin, uh, years ago and mm. i sold one piece and then i took it to san francisco and i raised the prices mm-hmm. and it sold because there's something about art where people actually in a weird fucking way like to spend money right. mm-hmm. but like who's to like it's weird it's like oh well if it's 250 dollars, i don't want it oh it's a thousand dollars yeah i want to spend it i want right. to buy it but there's people that actually really like to spend money mm. yeah I think it's also too like finding the pocket. I mean, like when you find a gallery where you sh- sh- 
you shoot work to them and they're like sold and you're like what that was too easy yeah, yeah and you're like eh. well you're happy to sell it but then in the back of your head you're like oh, fuck that was too cheap right <laughs> but, exactly yeah you know yeah but but there is that like like oh you guys have a pocket that connects with my shit and so now like that feels great you know like oh i can keep showing with you guys because you guys will keep selling my shit mm -hmm. where sometimes if you're showing like like how you said in marin maybe that pocket doesn't exist there yeah you know the fucking lady cutting herself open yeah, marin's that, like that won't work. we just want grapes bro <laughs> so like so so paul had a lot of sec success at uh madrone would you show there again i would but i don't think it'll ever happen again why is that because I think they just, he just supports up and, you know, he gives one show to someone. Oh, and it's, 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 like oh it's a one time deal. So, <laughs> I'm looking. Can I have a question for Sergio about that Sachi, Sachi online. Okay. Is that, what is this? you know, what's I funny know is what whenever is. I look for online and I'm, I'm always looking like, oh, Sergio's always there first on, <laughs> <laughs> on all the spots to sell stuff. <laughs> like Sergio's already, he's already treaded that. <laughs> Tried and, them all. Pockets still empty, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's interesting because I get I signed up I was like oh let me claim my name so I signed up for the thing but I never did anything with it and I'm really like is that are people selling on that or, from what I've seen yeah is, there is, are some people who sell work but it's very like actually that might be if you're an abstract artist that might be where you go to is sell that, your work oh, really? online <laughs> yeah. is, is it like a different kind of like big cartel kind of thing um what? Well, I'm, people, I'm not sure exactly what Big Cartel is. Well, it, isn't that? Isn't no, big it's cartel? not really like Big Cartel. It's like an online. Is it like gallery. Etsy? No, um, it's not. That's it's, probably what I was looking for. Uh, it's, work. Extreme work. It's a it's a website that um, I guess because <laughs> 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 um, uh, I guess it's run by that guy Sachi who owns that. Like, is it? I, uh, I heard yeah, they just that stole gallery. His name. And, that big gal. Oh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. I haven't done enough research on it, but it's just one of those places where they it's um is a place where you can upload your artwork to, and you can set it for a price. And then um, the neat thing about it is that they uh, they do take a cut from you though, but it's like um, thirty percent, right? Right. But yeah. what they do is they factor in the pricing for shipping and all that, so every you don't have you're not supposed to pay out of pocket for anything when it comes to like shipping but, but and so taxes do you, and all that. Do you that. actually give it to them and then they have like a, a no, you ship Amazon it, warehouse? You ship it yourself from them. But they, uh, when okay. they buy it, they're supposed to give you the money so that you can um, get the shipping supplies yourself and you don't mm. pay too much out of pocket for it. Uh, so I, I, just sent, uh, I just sent a piece to Guatemala and uh, I, was, I wanted to get a tracking number. This is okay. the kind of shit. This is the kind of shit that's fuck. That is, it actually disinterests people because it becomes more of a purchase. So the the price of the piece was one thing, uh -huh. and then shipping from San Francisco to Guatemala because I wanted a tracking number. Because like <laughs> yeah. when you get a tracking number, you're like not my problem, <laughs> right? You know, as opposed to like not getting a tracking number, it was like 180 fucking dollars to send it to guatemala holy shit oh, damn. like i could have i could have flown there and like got <laughs> right. a tan and like come back but it's there's there's it happens sometimes where people get uh they get the sticker shock because they're like oh the piece costs this much and then mm -hmm. there's the additional because it's like that's not out of our pocket right yeah. So a lot of people don't realize that, but that can actually get pretty expensive. I mean, oh yeah, it definitely it deters was a, people. It wasn't a big piece, eleven by fourteen, but <laughs> hundred for tracking, bucks, yeah, for sure. yeah. Damn. I, I want to pin Damn. Sergio down here still further on this <laughs> Sachi online. Go for it. Uh, right. Are you recommending? He's trying it? to make moves. Um, I've it, definitely it, sold some prints from there. Prints, them. okay. Um, I think I've maybe sold one or two originals off of it, but uh, I don't get a lot of traffic on there. I, I don't promote it a lot. I don't really believe in like sending a lot of people traffic to stuff that they're not promoting for me. Yeah. So like, if they're not putting me on their website with regularity why do i need to give them free publicity right. by sending okay. people to it so i'd rather just all those people who are are buying or who are willing to buy art for me i'd rather just sell it off of my website so but I, I that's think, more just right. like picking up people who might 
happen to know come about across me. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. the other thing about uh, dealing directly with people that purchase artwork is, I think, I think, and having done it before, I think a lot of people appreciate the hands-on approach. Like, mm-hmm. sure, like he wrote my fucking name and address, right? You mm-hmm. know, like I think there's something to be said for that. Yeah, too. yeah, and I think another thing too is like. Uh, I think there's people out there that are looking to purchase art and they end up looking to these websites to like figure out how to purchase your art. Yeah. It's like, just slide in a DM. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just slide in those DMs. Just send the nudes. Just send the nudes. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like if, if I get someone that inquiries about a fucking piece, even if they didn't realize the price point that the art is at, at least, like, we'll have a conversation. Hello, darkness. <laughs> God damn it, Sergio. <laughs> you know, like, you'll have, like, a... <laughs> Oh, Sergio <laughs> has to actually scroll through the buttons. I know. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, yeah, do you practice that? Uh, when I first got it, yeah, I definitely need to. <laughs> Should I get a DJ with that shit? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I, th- I think that's, like... Something people don't realize is like, I, I get a qu- like the question all the time on social media is like, do you sell this work? I'm like, of course I do. What the fuck? But it's like a something that I think is a no brainer. But someone yeah, else but is you like, also don't advertise it that much. That <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But I just assume it's like common knowledge. Like mm. artwork is for sale. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want it, you can buy it. You just have to figure out if you can afford it. I just think that's common knowledge. But then you realize like through questions like, Oh, you don't even understand. How yeah. This, Cause you're just like, we, we live in an art world where people go to galleries and shit. And then you're on the social media where someone just discovered you right next to them, discovering Takashi six, nine or some shit. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, ah. You like you have no concept of the art world, so you don't understand. Oh, that piece he's making isn't just to entertain me and be like, "Cool piece." <laughs> like, it is for sale, so. And they don't know the proper price. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think the other difficult thing is like if you take Facebook or Instagram, is if you look at your your cell phone, you're seeing a really crunched down version of it. Right. So like, unless you do a bunch of swipes and you see a bunch of detail, it's like you really don't get the grasp of a piece, right? you know? I mean, that could be where the gallery comes in, but I think uh, uh, it's just a sticky, scale. Yeah, sticky situation. It's like, oh, here's this 18 by 24 piece right. on your cell phone, right? you know? Or some, I mean, I think the, sometimes, I don't know if it works for you, Nate, because your hands are ginormous, but you'll see like someone's hand in the shot and you're like, okay, I have a grasp. You know how staged those photos are that we yeah. take? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Paul, I actually have to, oh, fuck, I forgot you have to stage some photos for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I, I, or forgot, someone I forgot to bring the fake artwork. Standing in front of a giant piece, you know? Well, that yeah. artwork's done and you just have your hand there? No, you, you, you basically, yeah, exactly. You've got your hand over the signature so it doesn't look like you've signed it yeah. <laughs> I forgot right. to bring that artwork anyway. Yeah, you see someone with like p- painting a thing in the and they have like titanium white on their brush, but there's there's like you're the, right. what you're putting in it doesn't make any oh, the, sense. The, the dry brush painting <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's I'm not gonna there's like I'm not saying names, but there's people that are like, Oh, I'm working on this piece and you're like, It's oh, it's already signed. Yeah. yeah. You're like, you're done. <laughs> Did any of you guys see that? It was uh popular on Reddit a few months ago. This lady who was like I think she's like Russian or something and she's sitting in front of her, her painting with her palette and the palette is just pristine. Like none of the colors are like what's on the, the, um, uh-huh. on the painting and like Reddit just ripped there. Like nice. there's just a giant thread <laughs> of her nice. getting ripped. What'd they say? Um, like you dumb, what are they? Probably. Here's some shit. You dumb upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> upstanding citizen. Nice. Yeah. Oh, those, are those, those are those sponsored posts. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. I mean, the internet's a weird, weird world in general. There's so much shit that's just fake, but presented to be right a yeah. representation of that person. You're like, you're not happy all the time. Exactly. No one is. Well, you know, the, the, the thing with social media is uh, it's like, I'm not a heroin user by any means, but it's like, it becomes, it's like heroin. Just social, you just be- socially. <laughs> you become <laughs> addicted to it. Right. Like you're like, Oh, let me look at fucking Instagram. Let me look at Facebook. It becomes an addiction. Right. And it's, it's like, 
regardless of seeing what everyone else is doing, you're like, oh, wow, great. You got to, I can't wait for you to eat that salad or, you know, right. or people that uh, post like 19 works in progress. It's, it's just like <laughs> Sorry, you become guys. addicted to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, isn't that, that's the, fu- that's where we are right now. Right. Yeah. Don't tweet a picture of a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was so fucking that spot was on. <laughs> How, when, did you just plan for this day? You were just yeah. like, oh, one day Nate will talk Sometimes about the stars align. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> so what do you what do you think about that, Paul? Uh, I just think it's interesting uh, that we put the machine in front of us. With it's picking what we're gonna see. Have you ever had that where you're you go to someone's their their main Instagram page and go, how come I didn't see all oh, yeah. this shit? And oh, all like, the time. Yeah. yeah, you gotta and you gotta like like everything in order for them to show up. And mm-hmm. then all the recent people you may have liked for different reasons, they're up there. And you, uh, well, they literally designed it. <clears throat> they took away the fucking everything's consecutively in order. Yeah. Oh, but you you get something that's like this was three hours ago, seventeen hours ago, right? An yeah. hour ago, right? Yeah. You're like what the fuck? And they designed it that way so that you can never just scroll through till the last time you looked and go like, cool, I'm done here, bye. Because they want you to be on there longer, so the they designed al- they it. They fucked up the algorithm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it happened. I I don't know why we can't just rate like one through five people and be like like five i definitely want to see everything they right. post you know down to one like i don't really i don't want any of that i want just in order from the, uh, the okay. earliest yeah, post to the well you know when you're taking a shit and you get to that last post you saw you're like all right cool i'm done right like that's when you're like right. you know yeah. you're done that doesn't ex- that doesn't exist anymore because no, they doesn't. shuffle it weird so mm-hmm. like i'll see a post more than once yeah because it's like i've already seen that but some for some reason you think i should see it twice right and then Someone else that I think is awesome, but they don't post that often. All of a sudden, I go to their page and I'm like, I missed all this shit because you guys think I don't like it because they fucking or because they post too many kid pictures. But but you know the and you have to like in a guilty way you have to like the kid pictures. But fuck that, Jesus. Uh, But but you know what? You know what? If you're an artist, don't post your kids. Oh Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ! It's like (laughs) it's like this fucking like slow motion watching a an adult grow up it's like it's like fucking annoying but anyway but the the thing is <laughs> that's paul laughing <laughs> and, and the other two uh but the thing is is like the irony of uh uh like say facebook and instagram right. is that's actually where i get a lot of my clients right so it's like yeah. if i didn't do art i wouldn't be posting a fucking photo of the burrito i'm about to eat you know right yeah mm-hmm I mean, no one should be posting a burrito they eat. <laughs> this is not very interesting. Like, oh, here's the thing. The <laughs> shots fired! Don't post the kid you have. Don't post the fucking political views you have. Don't post the fucking meal you're eating. You hear that, Ozzy? <laughs> Top three things. Top three things. Well, it's like someone posted a, a salad. I was like, I can't wait till you toss it. It's, like, <laughs> it's fucking annoying. Exactly. You know, because like, like Paul and I were talking, it was like, we actually don't post that often but it's mm-hmm. like you get that that guilty shit like oh fuck it's throwback thursday i gotta fucking find something mm, yeah i know yeah i actually have a problem with posting because i'm i'm afraid to put out i only want to put out my best stuff and that's really stifled me yes yeah. then i'm mm-hmm. like uh is this good enough and so i know a lot of people just s- spit up whatever right i don't I, i'm beginning to think my philosophy is not the way to do it i think you have to actually kind of like it the 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 shitty thing is the oversaturation is what generally works right i I think also like um you know you're you trying to curate to make your work look good makes sense in a way but then i think if you think of it differently almost like like every artist is flawed so i'll post something and go like this shit sucks like i'm not happy with it and oh, i'll just, really? i'll say that because it's like <laughs> you'll say that about your piece yeah i'm like really? i'm not happy with this at all don't and, buy this <laughs> and then um <laughs> unfollow me <laughs> but i i think that's much more like i think people enjoy that more because you're just being authentic well, because you know? it's, it's like this it's, whole it's this whole podcast is there's a authenticity to right. it you know, yeah. you're, you're not like, you don't you shit fucking rainbows and stuff. It's right. like, yeah, we fuck stuff up. I mean, we throw, I throw pieces away. We're like, well, right. that fucking sucked, you know? Yeah. 
But some people, like, every fucking turd is a fucking shiny one. Right. You know? Or you can pretend that everything you make is great, which is fine. Take whatever path you want. You could just... But, I don't know, I think sometimes if you say, like, I'm not happy with this shit, it looks bad, people are, like, into that because they... It's, like, almost like they have you on this weird pedestal of, like, this is my what I'm pursuing, and I don't understand that that person has misses. I just only see hits and i think that they're only good so it's it like build for like at least the young artists it like builds up this like weird like expectation that you should only make greatness so do you do you follow do you follow artists and then just immediately mute them i never i've never muted anyone i'll just unfollow your ass i'm like oh, i think i'm done here <laughs> you're too many kid pictures unfollow I, I i there was a girl that i went to uh i grew up with it was like you know, kindergarten through high school. Mm -hmm. First love? No. Uh, just she, she was cute, but um, <laughs> but no. Uh, she would go to like a, a like a, a theme park with her children, mm -hmm. and this is before you could do like the scrolling mm -hmm. side thing. And she would post thirteen fucking photos like in two oh, hours. No. <laughs> Damn. There's a local rapper that we joke about. <laughs> And uh, his social media, uh, his Instagram, has like 11,800 posts. <laughs> what the 11,800 posts. <laughs> you'll, like, you'll like swipe for like a minute, and then you're like, oh, that was just today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually, I've actually done that with people where I'm like, okay, this person posts a lot. And I swipe down like all these all these levels uh -huh. and it was like that was eight hours ago and it's like 12 posts back <laughs> and you're like uh, that just clogs up the feed I, I wanted to actually say on my follow me i promise <laughs> i won't clog your feed <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know like because for me that's i don't like when there's too many posts mm -hmm. clogging it up well yeah, you also sure. want like paul like you were saying you also want your your post to actually mean something like oh mm -hmm. i got something to share i think that but you know what's going on Oh, that's cool. Heart, next one. Right. <laughs> you know, like, right. We're, we're putting in two months' time in a painting, and right. it's just like two seconds. Wow, that's amazing. Right. Heart, right. next know. one. Yeah. <laughs> you get like, I at least try to comment something I really like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't. Yeah, that's that's the issue with the... It's like, it's a fucking dopamine feed. So you're like, cool, 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 I cool, know. cool. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like, I've, the actually, next thing. Yeah. I've actually liked posts that mm -hmm. I don't remember liking. Right. Because you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah <laughs> fuck, throw that guy a heart. Yeah. You know? Then you like go on their page and you look at it and you're like, whoa, that's fucking awesome. And you like, take a little extra time and you're like, oh, I already liked it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, Sometimes I bookmark things thinking, oh, I'll go back to look at yeah, it. Yeah. I'll never go back to look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look I buy bookmarks all because I like save references for my yeah, doodles yeah. so i end up like going through it and i'm like oh look at that piece that's yeah. awesome <laughs> um i just never remember to do that yeah yeah i mean it, it's 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 horrible it's like uh it becomes it's kind of, it becomes an addiction yeah like social mm -hmm. media like they it's it they the way it's worked and the way they do it it's like it's you know you're tapping the vein it's yeah. like you're you know re, re, you know when you go to the bathroom and you gotta take a shit, and you're like, oh, I might as well read the fucking, you know, band aid box because yeah. you forgot your phone. <laughs> you know, like if you go to a bar and you forgot your phone, it's like you you were like excluded from society. <laughs> you're like, how are people gonna know I'm drunk right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever gone to the bathroom without your phone? It's just like, exactly. what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, uh, um, oh, well, yeah. What, uh, I what's guess the, I'll take this shit. It was like I guess I'll go back to reading toothpaste <laughs> ingredients. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, alone you know with that. your thoughts. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> and that was exactly where it meant. Well, you, you, you know, uh, you know that comedian David Spade, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they were talking about he had a, a stand up, and they were talking about uh, not looking at your cell phone while you're driving. And he's like, what am I supposed to do? Just look at shit? <laughs> 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 right, exactly. We were just talking because I was yeah, on the drive here. I was good. like, look at that fucking person like, on texting. And like the very next car was like, a, and yeah. there's like 
like middle aged yeah, women. Yeah, not like, you know, like young you're too fucking like old to be doing this yeah. shit. Who the fuck I, is texting I'll you? Those buttons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like you're like in your forties. You can't be fucking. Like, it's like forty eight, and like you got like two twelve year olds at home. You're like, you're risking your life to read a fucking tweet, you dumb lady. Like, <laughs> god damn it, you're the worst. Like, I could, I could kind of understand like the young kid, you know, who thinks life is everything in that fucking high school or whatever well i, I was but. i was talking to a friend uh the other day and uh oh god you, what are you gonna pull up oh <laughs> the time is the like time friends, is fast. how yeah. many of us have yeah. Yeah. So, the time I just, is fast it was just kind of like uh <laughs> we were hanging out at cheers and uh <laughs> um he's similar age i'm 40 mm-hmm. and he's a few years younger and we were talking it's like what the fuck did we do before cell phones? Mm. Like, how did we do shit? Like, we just basically showed up when it got dark. Like, mm-hmm. it's like you showed up at dinner when it was dark and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You imagine, like, how many of us would have wound up on fucking milk boxes? Right. Because, like, you just fucking got lost in your words. Right. right. Yeah. Do you guys ever detox from that shit? I, just did, like, I two, haven't done it, no. I just did, like, uh, I think two months or a month. I think a month where I, I just was like, Instagram, I'm not fucking with it. Is that like sober January kind of thing? Yeah, something like that. (laughs) So I just took like, I think I spent like ten minutes every day on Instagram. I didn't even, I didn't even post or like or anything. I just was like, uh, and I would catch myself on it and be like, cause just cause that out of habit, Mm -hmm. I'd catch myself on and be like, oh, get off of this thing. Mm. And then I would look at my activity to see how much like time I spent on Uh, it, and it was like nothing. And I was like, oh really? This feels great. (laughs) Um, I only do Instagram. That's what made it. Me too. gave up on Facebook because the politics. Yeah. I didn't want to see that. I'm on TikTok right now. <laughs> Are you really? But it's stupid. I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> is that like grinder? It's like young kid shit. <laughs> yes, Wait, it's like grinder. Grinder. <laughs> it's like grinder without the if commitments. You find weird people. So, which way do you swipe? <laughs> yeah. If you want to date the weirdest yeah. people in the world, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like grinder, but you don't fall in love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, where, do we, where do we go from this i don't know i mean we're pretty good on time guys that was beautiful so uh paul final thoughts i would i would just like to right. say paul you i think are the classiest interview we've had you drink wine with a little <laughs> bit of san pellegrino on the side yeah. i'm surprised you didn't have caviar next to you yeah uh yeah this was a fucking to be cla- keep it classy a delight <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean yeah. We only deviated a little about the sink as a bathroom. No, that was that was all spot on talk. That was that, that's that's like real talk. That's that's what waiting dry listeners tune in for. <laughs> like, yeah. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are we actually, actually, I think of this podcast as the Beavis and Butthead of art podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, that's a compliment, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. So which one are you? <laughs> no, it's so well. I'm the laugher, so I'm obviously uh, Beavis. Uh, yeah. Cornholio. Or... <laughs> yeah. yeah, the uh, what the fuck was I about to say? God damn it, I lost my pot. Cornholio just stuck in my brain for some reason. And I was just like, I'm gonna okay, Cornholio. He <laughs> was cool because he had the Metallica shirt. <laughs> I honestly I didn't watch Beavis and Button when I was a kid because. I was my family was poor. We didn't have cable. Mm. It was always like a. I know that's a thing. I thought you guys like you didn't steal cable. Mm. Uh, we did when we were older. My dad climbed up the electric pole and stole that shit. He did that shit. Yeah, he allegedly oh. did that. Did you allegedly have the black box? No, he did that shit. Scramble. We didn't everything? have a. We didn't have a black box, but mm. I was already like older by the. Uh, my dad, he was done with this Christian phase by the time he was still we were still in cable so I was like god damn you could have been a fucking <laughs> why were you a Christian when I was a kid I could have been <laughs> so, watching so, cool shit <laughs> were, you, were you a beta kid a beta no never that not VHS beta Oh, I thought oh, you meant like you meant? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what you meant. Either. I thought you yeah, meant you know, like uh, like a beta male. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> beta kid. I'm like, oh goddamn. <laughs> um, 
My dad had the old school satellite, the one that took up half of your your backyard. Oh, wow. giant, now? yeah, no the way. giant dish in the backyard that you had to like stake into the ground. It took up yeah. half the. And so every now and again, they would like just do those promotions where it was just uh, you get HBO for a month for free or whatever. Mm-hmm. That, that's pretty much the only way we ever got any sort of pay well because then you you never unsign and you're like hooked it's like it's like having a like a gym membership (laughs) yeah you know you go for the first month and you're like yeah fuck it and you're paying like 60 dollars a month (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely well (laughs) fellas we did it i think we did it fuck yeah (laughs) thank you thank you paul thank you (laughs) yeah oh wait i have one more question yeah all right yeah Josh, what kind of pencil do you use? Uh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Burn. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's like a real fucking question, dude. God like damn it. Pencil, like, I saw you post about that. Like, what pencil do you use? You're like, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah. It happens too often. Do you still fuck with people? Uh, well, I haven't been posing for a month, so I've oh, had a right. month break from that. I mean, now people fuck with me. Like, our <laughs> listeners will go like, like I think on my last post, our listeners like, yeah, 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 all that's cool, but <laughs> back to a serious note, what pencil do you use? I'm yeah. like, you fucking asshole. He yeah. has, I'm painting. And he's <laughs> right. just asking me that just as a joke. I'm like, you fucking. Uh, but it's hilarious. I like it. <laughs> I, I understand it a bit more with like the pens because there's more variation. Right. But a fucking pencil. But a fucking pencil. <laughs> Goddamn. Cheaper, I'm expensive. actually a sucker for palettes. I'm always curious. Oh, really? That. Yeah. Like colors or yeah, the, the actual? Color, oh, okay. the actual colors they have. I don't know. It probably means nothing, but I like to. What, what, no, kind, I like of, what kind of uh, Paul? What kind of oil paint do you use? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the good kind. Uh, I remember we talked to um, Blake Newbert. Yeah, he was like, I use Walmart paint. I was like, <laughs> Fuck yes, <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. He uses all the cheapest shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was always when I would do oil paint, I'd use Windsor Newton. Is that mm-hmm. is that like frowned upon? No, oh, that's, fuck that. That's a solid brand. Yeah, Windsor Newton. All right, cool. Uh, all right. You want to buy some? <laughs> <laughs> The hustle. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know. That totally happens. You're like, as an artist, you're like, fuck, I'm never going to use this again. Right. Hey, you use this. Do you want this for half off? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, all right. How, how are we going to wrap this up? Are we, uh, I don't know. Should we all sing Hollow Darkness, my old friend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking. Uh, yeah, we did it. Fuck it. This yeah, has been yeah. Waiting to Dry. If you're still listening, fuck off. This episode is sponsored by Trickel. Hell yeah. Motherfucking (laughs) Trickel. I say (laughs) Trickel. So, uh, yeah, go to the to trickhell.com. Yeah, go to their website. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, t- uh, pick up some brushes and some wood panels and yeah. some floater frames. Yeah, they're beast. That brushes, the quality is amazing. They sure are, Josh. Hell they yeah. sure are. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, some of my favorites they got yeah, there. My favorites uh, are, like, um... The fine detail ones, like the I'm I'm not that into like uh, crazy bristles or any, what's wrong. You done yet? Uh, yeah. Can sure. I can I at least finish a sentence of mine? Uh yeah yeah go ahead dude I'm fuck. All Bye. right. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, uh-huh. I'm, uh, I really like the Spectrum brushes. It, uh, they're really yeah. good. God damn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really like the, the spectrum brushes because, uh, if you're really into like the spectrum the, brushes, you said, yes, the spectrum brushes. Cool. Where was I? Uh, I really like the spectrum brushes. I like the, their bristle brushes. Yeah. Bristles. Bristles God, are cool. God damn it. <laughs> Can I get through one sentence? All right. <laughs> I also like their their opal synthetic brushes. Got to try those opal. out. Opal, that sounds a little cool. Is what I mean to say. I think you just need to shut the fuck up and let me finish this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so their uh, their opals, my personal favorites. As I was trying to say, the Spectrum brushes, and uh, if you're feeling real extra fancy, go for their uh, Kalinsky. Silver. <laughs> <laughs> or the rounds <laughs> or uh yeah or their flats the long flats are my faves 
Uh, did, did you want to take this outside, Sergio, or what? You know what? I think we really just need to hash out all these issues we've been having lately. <laughs> um, <So>. Acting! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was hilarious. <laughs> you trying to be aggressive is seems so nervous for you. <laughs> it really is. I'm like sweating. It's not just because it's hot. I know. You're like, you're like so nervous and we know we're not going to actually fight. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to paint like your favorites, they got their pro team artists that you can check out as well. Yeah. They got Crayola, our buddy Glenn Arthur. Shout out. Mab Graves mm -hmm. and Nick Runge. Or Rungi, however you say it. Oh, yeah, you pro team. <laughs> they walk in slow-mo. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, use the code WTD10 when you check out, and you'll get 10% off. Hell, yeah. Yeah, uh, purchasing these brushes help us keep going. So supporting them supports us. Absolutely. Uh, you forgive me, Sergio? Just this once. <laughs> Joshua <laughs> awesome. Lawyer, just this once. Awesome. All right.